Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick. The one, the only, Hecklefish. It's good. Y'all hear me down there? Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Jenny. How dare you? <laughs> I got to the premiere late, but uh, I needed to see if that hecklefish how dare you landed. It landed. It landed nicely. I guess you guys know who, who that is. How dare you? He's not, he's not a big into the climate, uh, c climate crisis, that fish. You know, I, I believe everything that Davos says. I'm, a, I'm on board, but he's very skeptical. Skeptical of power. How dare you, slow Evo? Hello, Brian Pickle. Is your name Pickle? That's a, that's a good name. Carmel Tabby's here. Loved it. Octavio, see you. Paul Savory, what? Brandon Costigan, I see you. Bruce Bibbler. Dill Ilya, Bobby James, hey ya. Lisa Lap is back. Longtime supporter of the channel. Carmel's there. What up, Wu Yan? Hello, Will. Is that a lot of the a lot of the greetings are crazy long exclamation points and emojis, and then some people are just like, "Hello, hello to you." What do we hit? About forty five thousand in that one. That's pretty good. You know, that's not a story that I was super uh, excited about or interested in, but I hope some people liked it. I saw a couple of fans of the Zimbabwe UFO incident in the chat that that thought thought uh, I did a pretty good job. Well, I don't know. I I turned monetization on, so we're good down there, right, Jenny? And um, you got to turn slow mo on slow mode on. I can't follow the chat. It's go. It's the chat's. She's down there doing this. I don't know what to do. I just, I, I did it. I did everything I could. I don't know what to do. Shana H. Long live our benevolent uh, Lord Hecklefish. Where is, where is that Hecklefish at? Here he is. The moon landing was fake. Ah. You guys got one of these, right? Go to uh, shop.thewifefiles.com. You could still get in the first batch of those uh, talking Hecklefish plushies. They're super fun. Ten sayings in there. We may up to update the sayings from time to time. And another great way to support the channel is with uh, with some of the merch that we have up there. You know, every week we do a T-shirt specific to the episode designed by SMK, a.k.a. Rob, the official artist of the Y Files. And this has got to be one of the got to be one of his best designs. The Geekly World News. Creature, I, got, I, I, I have to lean out of frame because I can't read it. Uh, creature from Beyond, Terror at Mel's Hole. Everyone wants to know what's going on in Mel's Hole. Uh, crab Cat, Army Grows, Talking Goldfish Performs Miracles. 
blueprints for something, Anunnaki, something. Aliens attack innocent African school children. I don't know how innocent they were. What do you think? Do you believe those African school children? I'm not sure I do. You know, I didn't include it in the episode, but one person, you know, involved with the school said, of course I believe them. Everyone knows that children don't lie. That's someone who doesn't have children. Andrea can't wait to get the hecklefish plushie. Well, I'm glad you got one. Where is he on here? There he is. He's got ten, 10 of those. And his his sayings came from the uh, the community tab on the channel. I basically just asked everyone what you want him to say, and I picked the top ten. Uh, Priger two says next hecklefish his Bronx cheer. I agree. I agree. That's got to be in there. What we're trying to figure out, which I think would be fun, is kind of like a Bluetooth sort of speaker for him, but some way to sync it up with the channel, so that. You can watch the, the live premieres with Hecklefish by your side, and he will basically roast the, the episode as it goes on. He'll, he'll, he'll watch along with you. But I'm not sure how to do that yet. Uh, Serenity, who voices Hecklefish? Hecklefish voices Hecklefish. Who does your voice? Krilly McNilly, one of the plushies shipping out. My girlfriend must have it now. That's what she said. Um, I think they're shipping out first week in August. Mid-August, Jenny's saying. Victoria's saying two. She's saying two. Second week in August. Kronos, God's wise and QR codes. Yes, that QR code on the T-shirt goes somewhere. I can't tell you where, though. Tim Eldis, Hecklefish Fart. He definitely does. He, he, he farted in a couple of episodes. Early, or very early on, though. We cut back on the fart humor. Now we just do, we just do boob humor. But a couple of early episodes. His, but his farts were just bubbles. It was just bloop. Brandon Joseph th thinks I seem disgruntled. That's just my regular daily attitude. I just, it's always kind of negative. Rogue RR bubbles, yes. Not your mom says your mom voices Hecklefish. Well, I think your mom voices Hecklefish. What do you think of that? I think your mom. Talk about my mom. Peyton West, have you done any JFK videos? Not yet, but that's coming, Peyton West. It's one of my favorite conspiracies. The, um, Hey, Blackbeard too. Thanks, Blackbeard. The trick with the JFK video is to massage the script, just kind of sneak through the algorithm like I did with that moon landing. You see no context warning on there, right? You saw that? That's You just got to take the script and just walk through the raindrops. So we're good there for now. Uh, Robert Hoffman does hecklefish like vodka. That's actually what he swims in. That's not water. Corey Edwards, don't worry, AJ. I'd be disgruntled too if I had to wage daily war on the algorithm. You feel me. Dale, uh, Dale DeMont wants to see JFK vids. So those are coming. It's my favorite conspiracy. The, mo the movie, I'm, obs I'm obsessed with the movie. And uh, Mike Barr is working on that one for us. So he knows that conspiracy in and out. And I think we pretty much mostly agree on the conspiracy there. Because Barr and I don't agree on every every theory on everything. But uh, he he has opinions. If you follow him on Twitter, you'll see he has opinions. And it was funny because he's in that ancient aliens world, like all those guys that we see in all those shows. You, you know, we it's this, you know, it's the same guys we see in all the shows on the guy show, all the same guys. And there's like little rivalries and clicks and competitions and it's backstabbing. It's very dramatic. I'm not saying Mike's involved with that because sometimes he's he watches the show. So I don't want to. I'm not saying he's involved. He's involved with it a little bit. You know, they attack each other's books. It's it's really it's fun to watch. Speaking of, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's OMG the Y Files. I got myself into a little bit of trouble today because talking about the um the congressional hearings on the, the UFO hearings, which we're going to get into specifics a little bit later on. Um, I'm, I'll play a couple of clips for you. We'll do a little analysis. I, you know, I was looking forward to like, oh, we'll, we'll just do analysis on this hearings. Be amazing content. I, I don't know about you, but I didn't learn much. 
it's just the it seems like the same hearing to me. So I got myself into a little trouble on Twitter because I said I'm not impressed with the hearings. It feels kind of like a psyop. We didn't learn anything new, and some folks were very very upset about about that. And I had to keep explaining. I said it over and over. I actually I had to pin it on the pro on my profile for a minute. I believe in the UFOs. I believe in aliens. I believe the government has this stuff. I believe all of it, but I don't believe the government. So when you have someone like David Grush and the other guys come out, everything they say is pre is approved. It's pre-approved from DOD, from the Pentagon. Appro everything. He runs it all by them. So that doesn't sound like a whistleblower, right? That sounds like that sounds like PR. So I want the real whistleblower. So people are saying like, well, what do you need? You know, to get in, get in attitude with me. What do you need to believe? Well, what I need is I need a full breakdown of OPSEC at a, at a top secret facility where someone at a high level sneaks out with pieces of, of spacecraft, photos of it. The whole story explodes. And then we get in there, meaning like, independent media, get into that room with the craft, live stream from it, live stream from it with independent verification. That's, we do that, then we're good. But until we get to there, I can't trust everything that comes out. You know, you, you don't believe David Grush? He, you know, he was a high ranking, uh, he was in military intelligence. Wake up, wake up. Richard Bramlett dropping good plugs, very strong plugs in the chat. Appreciate that. Insane movie gig. It sounds like someone following the new whistleblower protections rules. That's the thing is he doesn't necessarily need them. He may, and look, to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I said this to all the detractors on Twitter, I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. So I'm not crapping on, on the guy or, or any of this. You know, so... Do I think it's uh, it's very good we're having the conversation that people are talking about it? UAP's trends on Twitter every day, that is that is only good for that to happen. So I'm all for it. It's not like the hearings set us back or detract necessarily. They keep people talking about it. And every time there's hearings, UFOs gets destigmatized a little bit more, a little bit more. So it's not... So you don't sound like a tinfoil hatter every time. You just need regular people to just, you know, meet up in Walmart with their Wi-Fi shirts on and be like, oh, did you see that UFO that landed? Oh, yeah, it was totally, it was cool. We saw that. We brought the kids. That's what you, we needed to just normalize it. So the hearings help that. But we're not getting specifics. But in his defense, he did. He submitted all kinds of other documentation to Congress that we don't have access to. Uh, he names names. He names corporations. He even talks about how he didn't specifically say that people are killed by the government over this stuff, but he did say that I have notified the proper authorities about that. I don't know how you feel, but I'm sick of biologics. That's stupid. That's stupid biologics. That's a term that no one heard before. No one heard biologics before in the mainstream except talking about um, pharmacology and pharmaceuticals and, you know, researching germs and stuff. That's where that comes from. Biologics is what is a non-human biologic is what? Is it a cat? Is it a potted plant? You know, what, what is it? Is it a probiotic gummy to help my prostate? What is it? But we don't know. And he won't say... Alien. He won't say extraterrestrials. He just won't say it. He's not comfortable with the term. Now, what I've what I've I've heard is him. It at least from analysis is well. He we're not going to say extraterrestrials because the beings he's talking about could be terrestrial, meaning they're from here. They were cloned here. They were bred here. They were born here. That's fair. That's fair to say that, that those aren't extraterrestrials. It's a little sneaky. It's kind of lawyerly, but it's interesting. But more questions then. All right, so they're born here. They're, they're not extraterrestrials, but where did they come from? Where did the DNA come from? Ohio Kyle, this has AJ triggered. I'm not, tr I'm not triggered. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get ahead of our talk later is really what I'm doing. 
because you know I know a lot of you guys come here for UFO stuff, but um, you know if you watch this channel for any length of time, you know that I love the stories, but I the but I love the truth more. So we'll tell stories about UFOs and aliens and ancient civilizations and giants and the moon is hollow. We'll tell all those stories because they're fun. Nell's Hole, it's a fun story. But when we get through the story and having our fun around the campfire, I want to know what's real. I want to know, is there a Mel's Hole? There's not. I w but I want to know that. Epic Conspiracy says, AJ isn't a UFO YouTuber. That's correct. I am not. I'm not. I sit, I talk to a fish. And I try to, be, I try to say this all the time to, to be as honest and authentic as I can be, especially when people want me to like go on their UFO podcast or their UFO YouTube channel. I don't turn those down because I'm a jerk or I'm too busy. I'm not that busy. I could go on your show, but I can't sit and talk about UFOs and aliens for, for two, three hours. I don't know enough about it. You know, I'm not the UFO guy. I have never heard of these stories before you guys send them in. You know, you guys send in the stories, every single one you send in. I know like the, the big stories. I know Tic Tac UFO. I know that one, but I didn't know the Zimbabwe aerial school. I'd never heard of that before before a couple of people from the audience sent it in. And then what I do is I just research it or I work with the team like Zeb the super fan or Mike Barra or Casey or the other folks who help us out. And we research the, the heck out of the story and then I try to make a fun episode for you. That's all. And Justin, uh, I, I know Cricket Delete, Cricket's very protective, Justin. But Justin was saying AJ's angry today. I'm not, I'm not angry, I'm in a great mood today. Today has been a great day. Snake eyes, 2.4 million can't all be wrong. That's nice of you to say. I still can't believe that's a number. Uh, Dini says you do good. I appreciate that. So yeah, I don't want to, I'm, I don't, I'm not part of UFO Twitter. I'm not a UFO YouTuber. I, if anything, this is channels for storytelling and entertainment. So when someone emails me the, their new invention, that's going to change the world and you know, rock science to its core. If I would only help them with some funding and then bring it, their project to the media, you know, I'm not the guy to do that. I talk to a fish. I can recommend folks, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Johnny Shabazz, AJ's not upset. He's just a realist. I'm a realist, but I still have, you know, Johnny, I still have the twinkle in my eye. You know, I still like, I still like Mel's hole. I still want to, I still want to. Put myself inside Mel's hole. I want to. I want to smell Mel's hole. I. I want to be in Mel's hole. My wife is shaking her head, but you know what I mean. We do that all the time at home. She does it too. On the on the live stream, she's very she's very careful. But at home, she'll look at the stats and be like, "Everyone wants to get in Mel's hole tonight." Chemical says, "Hey, oh." Now, Bernie uh, thinks I'm the best. Can't believe someone as reasonable as you exists in real life, let alone the internet. Yeah, the internet's pretty wacky. They're pretty wacky out there. But, you know, I, I'm old school internet. Like, look, I don't know how old you are, but I guarantee I was on the internet before you were born. I guarantee it. The internet was way cooler back then. Now the internet is weird because everyone has their, their persona. Like if you're a... A, a constant Twitter user, I know what your persona is. Your persona is atta opinions, attack, opinions, insult, opinions, attack. I know that. I read Twitter. <laughs> I, I get insulted and attacked every day. But it's fine because I, I know who the person is. You know, I know that's a person in pain, reaching out for connection. I know that. You know, so, you know, the Instagrammers with the filters, the TikTokers, with, you know, with, with the boobies out at, you know, there's all the personalities and what you see on the, the after files, this is my personality. It's cranked, you know, honestly, it's cranked up, but this is pretty much who I am. You know, if I sound like sometimes I'm kind of being an asshole, that's because I'm kind of an asshole, but I try to be as honest as I can here. Cody Welch, please do an episode on demons and aliens. You need uh, and demons and angels. You have to be more specific. Elite Gaming says we're not in pain, CIA boy. See, that's that's someone who's in so much pain, 
so much pain. And this is a safe space for you, Elite Gaming. This is a place where you can be open and honest. You let just let our community wash over you, and then the healing will begin. Uh, Michelle Meredith, what's the email for suggestions? I think y'all really, really want to see about the bonsai kids. I never heard of that one. Um, you can email tips at the yfiles.com or go to the yfiles.com slash tips. And that's, uh, and that's where we get the topics. Every topic comes from you guys. Every single one. Andrew Chill says there's boobies on the internet. There might be, I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I've, I've heard that there are, I haven't, I've yet to see one. Remember my wife is here. I gotta, gotta take it easy. Kelly A wants to see Tartarian Empire. That's coming. Uh, Mike West, David Politi's Missing 411 episode. Uh, Mike, we're probably going to cover Missing 411 cases in the What Files, which is a, the next channel that's coming up, hopefully by the end of this year. Probably not, but 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 soon. We're, we're already working on it, and we'll probably cover those cases there. I've avoided them thus far, primarily because David... You're not going to get more detail than David does, you know. And I follow his channel. I watch those stories. He's he's into them. Um, but since since we kind of found our groove here on YouTube, I've avoided uh, missing four one one stories because there's usually a victim involved, and often that victim is dead. So we don't want to get demonetized because that. <laughs> This is what I do for work. And I have tried for the most part to keep the channel as PG-13 as I can. From the beginning, I didn't think any kids would watch this. And for a while, I, I, I told people, I said, don't let your children watch the Wi files but they like Hecklefish and that stuff. So I have tried to be as PG-13 as I can. So the whole family can sit and enjoy Wi files which some families do, weird families do. But I, you know, I like weird people. Lisa Lapp loves all conspiracies. She's a conspiracy chick. All right. Well, well, Brother Wildfowls is here. Um, he's, he's probably already DM'd you, Lisa. It's probably already in your in your box. Thomas Paul thinks I'm a, a thousand percent CIA. You know, I can neither con confirm nor deny that, but I'm glad you're here. And uh I appreciate any super chat to help uh, help the channel. You know, those CIA checks, they're not as big as you'd think. If he's not in Mel's hole, Hecklefish says, Sal, Hecklefish wants a blowfish girlfriend. Yeah, Sal, you pay attention. He did say that. <laughs> he did say that. I don't know why he likes that, but uh, but he does. Smith 0729, 80,000 people watched live. Not tonight. I think our record is 59,000. Let me look at the girls. 59,000? Yeah, 59,000 is the record, which I think was last week. Tonight we got 45,000, which, hey, I, that's pretty good. You know, when, when we had four, I remember when we did 520 on a premiere, I couldn't even believe it. I was running around the house screaming, 500 in the premiere. And Jen was like, whoa, what? Premiere what? Oh, that channel that you work on? Yeah, she, she's only been with us a year or so. 46K says Mars 17. Lisa Lapp, 45K. Starship and Haiku asking, is Victoria single? Depends how much money you make. No, I'm joking. Of course, she's married. She's married. Happily married. So happy that it's kind of it's kind of awkward to watch. But yeah, but happily married. Townsend says, ha ha, CIAJ. Look, I you know, I think the rumors of are I first of all, I think they're hilarious. Um, because they entertain me, especially on some of the message boards. I know you guys from above top secret are here. I I read your stuff. I don't comment in there, but I pop in. To uh, to above top secret and check out what's going on, and man, they 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 they're listing reasons why I'm deep state. There's even I don't want to give the guy too much attention, but there's even a channel dedicated to proving that I'm deep state. Who's tracked my finances? He tracked them to the CIA. 
That's not how any of that works, but I find it entertaining. So let's keep, let's keep the, the rumors going. It, you know, it brings, I think it for regular fans of the show, they're entertained by it for the most part, but what it does help is it brings hate watchers in and, you know, whether you're a fan or a hate watcher, all views count, you know, they're all, it's equal, but hate watchers, I mean, they're engaged, they hit thumbs down, they leave comments. So, so that's fine. Double back again, deny, deny, deny. No, if I, if I deny it, then I think it's too obvious double back. I, I, I'd rather just be nebulous about it. Speed of thought, you know you made it when you got haters. 100% true. But, you know, I'm I'm still the typical YouTube person. I don't know. YouTuber, I hate that. That um, you you can get a thousand positive comments, which, which the episodes do, but you get one hating comment, and that's the one you remember all day. And they hurt. They definitely still hurt. So, you know, what I try to do is I go into the comments. I, I People who, like, watch the episodes right away, I'll go and talk to them because those are usually the fans, and then I, I bail out of there. Bill Azilla thinks that I got Mr. Ball and beat on the storytelling. Look, I, I, followed, I followed John's channel. I think he does a great job. I think, you know, no one can tell a 15-minute story in 45 minutes like Mr. Ball. I'm... I'm joking, of course. We're all big fans of balling here. Matt Hunt wants to know who hurt me. I can't even, I can't, we got to start a list. Matt, you know, you jump on the Discord later and uh, we'll do a little therapy sesh. Scott Boyd says, Mr. Ballin is awesome. I agree. As far as like storytelling, he's the, he, he's the big daddy. Everyone's still in, 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 in John's shadow. Thug CTC Jeff, AJ and Ballin, favorite YouTube channels by far. That's cool. Purposeful Porpoise thinks my American accent is great for KGB. I'm just here on the YouTube's make video for you. You like it? Yes. Avatar guy says, who's balling? <laughs> Joner Games is down there hate watching. This channel is pure garbage. I like it. Try to never miss an episode. I appreciate you. I'm glad you're down there. Tommy Barnes pre-recorded, and we are all bots. Let's see. We're it's getting there. It's getting there. So coming up, we're gonna cover the uh, the hearings. Hang on. Let me let me at least pimp out some merch while while I'm doing the pre-sell. We're gonna cover the the hearings. Um, I got a couple of short fun videos that Victoria dug up and that will I will probably get started with those in a minute including the best UFO video I've ever seen and I'm not being hyperbolic I'm not clickbaiting you it's literally my favorite UFO video that I've ever seen so that's coming up in a minute also we got you know story hour coming up at uh at about one hour in and at some point, we're going to do a giveaway. I think we're going to give away a Hecklefish plushie, but I'm not sure. I'm not really in charge of that. Rob Collins is not a bot. He's an NPC. Just Rob, AJ, come on, man. Were you a cop or not? Uh, law enforcement family. The creepy pasta poet. My brother says it takes his wife 20 minutes to tell him something that only took five minutes to happen. Well, she's got to, you know, that's how wives tell stories. You know, mine is the same. And she's not down there going, huh, huh. she's down there going, yeah, that's kind of true. Because they, you have to paint the picture and you have to set everything up. You know, so if she, like she, if she's telling me a story about, I don't know, there's an armadillo in the yard. That's the story. There was an armadillo in the yard. But somehow it starts with, her, you know, how her friend Mary makes the best spaghetti. And eventually we get through spaghetti and then we get to bowling leagues and then poker night. And then we end up at armadillo in the yard. And I just like, can you just get, start with that part? But, and, but the answer is no, is like, you need all this information. Otherwise that's not going to make sense. Bots. Hmm. Stephanie price, dead internet theory. A little kidding. Dead internet theory is definitely a thing. 
You know, I don't think it's as like spooky as it sounds. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. Brito Bizarro wants to know if I was a TV producer. I was, but not very, not a very famous one or high-end one. But but yes, I was in the biz. Uh, Lisa AJ was a radio DJ. I thought I was. Did that for a long time. When radio is radio still even a thing? Most of one, my wife is the same way. Yeah, I mean that's just a wife thing. Bef you know, when you sign the marriage license, she has to fill out. Can you tell a super long story with way too, way too many details? She checks the box, and then that's it. You get hitched. That's how it works. Let's do a couple of super chats before we get started on actual content. But um, Quantum Sledgehammer is here, longtime supporter of the channel. Holy mackerel! You see what I did there? Thanks for dropping a couple of shekels on me, human. <laughs> Forget whether the ETs are friendly slash evil, have mind control or not, or what they want with us. Important takeaway is we're finally getting what sci-fi has promised us for decades, one piece jumpsuits. Yeah, it's always the, the, just the onesies, just a tight onesie. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's what we'll all be wearing at some point. Mike and Murph is there for $10. Just want to show some love for my favorite channel. Thanks, Wi Files team. Thanks, Mike. Mike is a great supporter of the channel. We appreciate him. Oh my goodness. Did you hear that? Captain's log, star date 10-09-46.44. The Afterfiles live stream has proven itself once again to be extremely unprofessional. Hurts my feelings. For our drums, longtime supporter of the channel. Dude, another UFO landed in my yard last night. I was abducted in their spaceship. As we neared another galaxy, I knew they were up to no good, so I farted on them. They let me go, but now they released a crab cat on Earth. <laughs> okay, okay, that was, that was funny. All right, for our drums out there writing sci-fi. Uh, there's Paul, uh, the big whale, the big sport of the channel. Are you sick of it yet? Amazing ending. Agree 100%, but I've got to get to bed so I can work tomorrow to pay the rent. You do that, Paul. We want you to earn as much money as possible. Couldn't run this channel without Paul. Matthew Moeller is there, $5. Solid episode. Also enjoying the It's Obviously Aliens mug. Dang thing is huge. All our mugs are 100% fistable, Matthew. So if you can't get your fist into one of our mugs, you let us know. We got it. We'll take care of that. There is Jeff Wallace, five dollars. Ordered my Heckle Cult shirt. Nice. Your artist is awesome. That's SMK, aka Rob. You can't hire him though. He's too busy. Your artist is awesome. How about T-shirts for some classic episodes, like my fave simulation in Boobquake? That's a great idea. To go back and come up with some of those. That's a great idea. Maybe we have Rob. I'm looking at Jenny now. She's down there. I can see her head. You can't. I can see her head. And I can see Gino in his, yeah, there he is. He's in his storytelling chair. No, no, you stay back. You don't, you, it's not you yet. You stay back. He's, le he's leaning in. He's like, oh, showtime, my own. Yeah, he's ready to go. So, yeah, so maybe we have Rob look through the old episodes, see if there's any that jump out at him. Because he comes up with all the design ideas. There's Ron Klotzner, one of my favorite uh, avatars. Couldn't the aliens have caused the children to see different things so that others wouldn't believe their stories? Yeah, I mean, I've heard people talk about how a lot of that experience gets implanted into their memory or their minds. I think that could be a thing, you know, depending on the technology. And I've heard people say, and there's validity to it, is we only see them because they let us see them, right? Because shouldn't they have the the technology to hide from us whenever they want, you know, we're, we're making progress with metamaterials that bends and warps light around an object. So basically you have that, the Harry Potter invisibility cloak. I mean, that's going to be a thing. So you think if they're 10,000 years, a million years ahead of us, that they would have metamaterials, but, but maybe they don't, maybe not, not that kind. I know there has been some rec recovered, pieces, and I think it was from Brazil, where, where they are metamaterials. Davina Weaver's there. Good evening, everyone. Great show. I've never heard of the story. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I appreciate the support, Davina. We couldn't do this without you guys. Heather is here. Sometimes I wonder which I love more, the episodes or the afterfiles. We love you all. Great job as always. Sound effects and music on point. I appreciate you noticing the production, Heather, which is better. The, the episodes of the afterfiles, the episodes are, are way better. This, I mean, this is not a professional thing whatever this is. This is not the thing. There's Eric Bishop for $49.99. 
Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Human. I want you to know I said human. Thank you for all the dough. Tipping. As I'm sure you will find. Always is a good time. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, it's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. <laughs> so I don't know how it was for you guys, but at least for me, we Jenny was frozen mid-dance with a fish face on like this. I was? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, Hybrid's yeah. going to make a meme out of that. He's going to make a meme out of me. Uh. Then how's everyone doing tonight? Gino, thumbs up. Victoria is good. Victoria looks yeah. rested. The move is the move is is done. No, getting there. No. Not no. done. No. Last couple of weeks after files were a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. How about you, Jenny? How's your studio coming along? Oh, it's coming along so good. Did you, did you do you have a? Would you get a mermaid skeleton this week? I did. I got a mermaid skeleton, life size mermaid skeleton. Right. And they're uh, real. They're real. It was expensive. You can't just buy a mermaid skeleton from like Oriental Trading Company. You got to go on the dark web. You can't just hire a call mermaid and then, you know, take care of her in the bathroom. No. I wouldn't do that. Well, Eric says, it's always a great fun story. Much love to everyone, especially Victoria's dog who growls at her for attention. That is true. That does happen. You know, what do we have coming up for story hour? Uh, tonight, we're going to do an abduction story from Brazil. From, from Brazil? Yes. And it's uh, PG-13. So during story hour, if you do have children, you might not want them in the room. It's not too, too uh, graphic, but certainly... Uh, uh, you know, is a little blue. All right. So speaking of PG 13, I'm going to play the greatest UFO video of all time right now. But if you have little ones watching, there's like one or two curse words in this. I don't think it's that bad. I just want to put it out there. Are we ready? Yes. Hey, look right. It's coming down here. Y'all look at it's coming down the same direction. Oh, it's breaking up. Oh, it's six, it's eight, it's nine. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Look at that. Oh, look, look. Are you, are you kidding me? We're in the middle of the show. So I got to get over to the new studio because it's got the fire. They, they, they stop. They stop. Look at that shit. It's an alien. Sorry, I'm trying to record it. Aliens! Oh Aliens! Oh, they cut the lights off. Aliens! <laughs> Y'all need to be shooting that! Y'all need to be shooting this shit right here! <laughs> they looking at us! They dividing! <laughs> they dividing up! <laughs> we getting invaded! <laughs> Those are not fun. Look at that shit! <laughs> they are sitting! Y'all need to be calling damn news! <laughs> they come down to the goal, oh, they come to Earth! <laughs> they're coming to herb. Oh, they're coming Nerf. faster. Oh, shit. <laughs> look, they fly towards each other. They fly. To, oh, my God. Look, they moving in for formation. <laughs> they just stand there. Officers, do something about that. <laughs> what are they going to do? I'm not going to do nothing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming down here. Ah, <sighs> Neil Wonderboy thinks that's strong. I think that's the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. I could, I could listen to 10 minutes of that guy. And I like, and, and his girls, there. like, I'm trying to record this, but he's over. He's too excited. Now, that clip is a few years old. Um, it's, it's not a recent one. It's actually been, I'm not, I'm not a UFO. I'm not the aliens guy. I talk to a fish. I tell stories. It's all new to me. That's why every day is like Christmas. It's Christmas morning because it's all fresh. All right. This one, this one should, this one is a UFO sighting um, from California. Uh, a recording was made in June, 2023 in California of an airline with the UAP moving alongside it. I don't know if you can see that there. 
but it's what? Right, not the scattered creatures. All right, excellent. Buzz is the plane. You freak out a little bit on the plane. Did yeah. you see that out the window? Start screaming. Next thing you know, you're on Twitter. <laughs> There's something on the wing of the plane. All right, I've got this. I got this last one for you. Thanks, Victoria, for pulling these together. So this is just stuff in the sky. What is that in the sky? Does anyone? This is July twenty fourth. So this is a couple of days ago. What is going on in the sky? Gino, you hear about any of this? Uh, yeah, I saw this video. Um, I, I mean, it's it's an interesting one. Um, it, is this real? They're all real. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. It's, I mean, is this real or is this someone playing around with Blender? Uh, it, you know, it's hard hard to say, of course, uh, especially with it being so recent. Not too much uh, debunking done on, on this one. Um, but uh, it's interesting. There are a lot of videos coming out that with 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 uh, crafts that look exactly like this in the, in the air. This one has a lot more than usual. And well, all equidistant in a perfect line. Mm -hmm. Victoria and I were talking about this one, though. The thing about this one is that they're not moving. And so and it's super overcast. So it makes me wonder if this is some type of like cloud phenomena where like the light from above is just coming like you know, sometimes you see clouds that do some really weird stuff. Since nothing's moving. Is this harp? Is this harp getting Maybe. tested down there? Maybe. Pretty wild. Even if it's not UFOs, I'm really curious as to what this is. Well, yeah. Um, well, John Hammer says, come on, they're reflected ceiling lights. Is that all this is? Just a reflection? <laughs> of, of just recessed lighting? Faucet 98 can y'all can you, can you check, can the, check India? the India Bang Bangalore strange that one? Yeah. So how do we India India Bangalore? Is it the sky? What is that what I'm searching for? Yeah. It's looking. I got I got internet problems tonight. Uh, tonight's observing guide, Bangalore, India. Mystery door. There it is. A mystery door appears in the Bangalore sky. Uh, I've seen this one too. It's uh, crazy. It's interesting. All right, let's what? see what happens in Bangalore. Oh, this is harp oh. right here. What? A, what? So cool. <laughs> what? Hang That's on, internet problem. Processing. 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 I saw another one of these. This looks like a porch and this looks like a door. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like door, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. I saw another one of these on uh I guess on Twitter or Instagram the other day. Just the clouds, it just made a perfect square in the sky. Just how? Well, I agree with Elite Gaming on this one. This looks like that there's building. It's like a building behind all the fog, and you're yeah, just seeing. Yeah, that that would make sense. That would make sense. Be careful with Elite Gaming. He's he's fragile and in pain. So. Oh right. So be gentle with him. Okay. What? Wagman, Russian woodpecker. <laughs> um. I, I think you're conflating two uh, number stations there. Or maybe the Russian woodpecker was that. That was a number station. Speaking if you're into that stuff, there's an interesting episode of the Y-Files about number stations. L shout out Lincolnshire Poacher. Go ahead, Jenny. Speed of Thought is saying it's called the Fata Morgana Illusion. F-A-T-A. 
I don't know if that's I don't know if that's that particular illusion. That's like um, when you see reflections in the sky, mm. or sometimes you look down a long road and you see kind of the waves, and then you see a reflection in the sky. That's what that illusion is. I don't think that's what it is. Sequel, anything that has potential is recorded multiple times by strangers. That's true. Gemcore with a good point, no right angles in nature. That's that's true. That's why it looks very strange to see. Devil81 thinks it's harp. Laser Griff thinks it's an interdimensional crossover. I like the way you think. Ah. Liver Spread says project blue beam testing. I thought about blue beam with with the other one. You know, if it's it, it Look, if you told me that's reflections from from the living room lights, I I would totally see it. Well, let's let's just for a minute imagine it's not. That's like to me that's how blue beam starts. Can I speak for a second? Well, that's why I stopped talking. I saw the finger. Tonight's episode is ranking 1 of 10. What? Yes. <laughs> the figure. Yes. I just did the same thing. <laughs> here, here, I'll tell you why I think it is, AJ. It's because what, this, this one. No, no. Uh, why we're ranking one to ten is because the Zimbabwe alien story is widely uh, accepted as one of the, the uh, uh, most important stories because of all of the witnesses. Now, most people have never debunked it. The debunking that you did tonight is the first time I really heard any real debunking on, on the story at all. So uh, so I think it's going to get a lot of um, views just because it's, again, widely accepted as one of the biggest uh, stories because of so many witnesses. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people wanted that one. And... Um... With a story like that that's so well known to people who are into this stuff, I think sometimes it's helpful to have someone like me come in because I don't really know the story. So I'm totally objective. Oh, so, you it for me. Yeah, I, 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 mean, it. I believe this one. Uh, you know, well, what, what, what debunking ruined it for you? Because I, I don't feel like I trashed it that hard. It was really that I didn't realize how many different accounts there were that weren't the same. Um, because in a lot of the ones that, that we go over with multiple witnesses, they do tell the same story, like uh, the uh, Varginha uh, in Brazil, all the yeah, uh, uh, what I say, uh, all, all, all the um witnesses said this pretty much the same story. So, um, so again, I didn't realize that that everyone told different stories. Now, uh, I thought there was follow up 30 years after also, uh, there was. This, but sticking to their same story. There was. But if they're all different stories, who's sticking to the same story, that's sticking to 30 different stories. Right. Well, but look, anybody that's spent any time around small kids knows that when they're like traumatized by something, that didn't bother me, the part that there were a bunch of different stories. There were a few kids that they talked to that I'm like, that kid's totally making it up. But a couple of the girls that they talked to, like the one girl that was like almost in tears trying to like relive it, that's, yep. that's powerful Compelling. stuff. Yeah, it so, was. Which, that's, why, that's why I used that clip because with production, crying is gold. So you got to. Yes. You got to do that. But um, but the thing about with some of the younger, because some of the kids were like s seven, eight years old. If you take a seven-year-old, put them in a field and say, there's a UFO there, and then ask them in 10 years, they'll say, there was a UFO there, and they'll describe it to you, that they saw it. Because so, cause when we're that age, we can't discern experience from imagination and dreams, which is why children are – their testimony is inadmissible because we kids don't know the difference. And then once the, once the memory is seeded, it grows from there. Yeah. But kids are also just by and large, like they're easily swayed, but they're also just honest. Like, you know, anybody that's been around a kid that just comes up and says, Oh, you know, you, <laughs> <laughs> What happened to your face, you know, or whatever, 
Right. Like, your eyes eyes. droopy. Right. right. I know. I know I have a droopy eye. You don't need to. Right. They so, do that. Yeah. But Sybil says, my seven-year-old would say it's an alien, even if it was a guy in a Pinto that broke down. Well, there's Eric. And there is Brian Carney, $5. Ugh, thank you, human. I'm getting killed on alimony and guppy support payments over here. I love the sting at the end of the episode. Feels like the right week to do that. Yeah, that wasn't planned. Oops. Hang on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to... Uh... You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. Yeah, that, it, it just kind of worked out that way. Uh, Brian. But sometimes the timing works. You know, we, we are in the simulation after all. There's Thought on Fire 222 for $10 an episode on the comparative mythological and religious themes of humans li living extremely long lifetimes. And can we get some merch of a beanie with a tinfoil hat on it? Also, I fell for the crab cat. Um, Thought on Fire, the, the tinfoil beanie, is. we're working on that. It's harder to find than we thought. That's coming. I like your idea of an episode on people living a long time. So uh, maybe we can do that. If you haven't seen the, um, which was that episode, the two-parter would be good for Thought on Fire. What was his name again? Uh, St. Germain? Yeah, the Count of St. Germain. Well, that, that might that might scratch your itch a little bit, Thought on Fire. Count of St. Germain is supposedly 2,000 years old and still walks the earth now. No spoilers, but it's a two-parter. Uh, Anthony McGuire, Gino dresses like the cool guy on an after school special. Hmm. Well, I'm just wearing our merch. I mean, that's our merch. <laughs> and that's our merch. Right, what would my after school special be about? Say no to something. Say, say no. No means no. I, I, I look like the kid Gino beats up in the after school special <laughs> in the bullying video. But I like the glasses. Just let's hide the black eye. There's shown in fan four. Big support of the channel for $10. Thanks for an interesting episode. If the teachers in the meeting had noticed all the commotion outside, maybe they'd have seen aliens too. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was an adult near the schoolyard. There was like a little snack bar or something like, like a shop. She didn't see anything, but that was where the kids ran first. Cause she was the first adult. So, you know, on one hand, it's awfully convenient that no grown-ups saw the UFOs. But on the other hand, that's why I included those other stories toward the end where teachers did see it. So it's not just, oh, here's an episode about a bunch of kids imagining things. Teachers saw it there. And I think those, those later stories, especially the one in Australia, were even more compelling because you have a teacher who's been – who's – was harassed and harangued by his government. They threatened to, to, to get him fired. You know, so I believe that guy. That's crazy. There's Cohen Austin for $10, $20. Ching, ching I appreciate the tip, human. Time to hit the tables, baby. Hey, my grandpa suggested this channel to me, and I've watched every episode now. I was hoping you could give a shout out to my grandpa, Chuck, for being a great guy and a great grandpa. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. What's up, Chuck? What up, Chuck? He, Chuck's definitely a cool grandpa if he recommended this channel. And a grandpa Chuck, probably two years younger than me. Dr. Gonzo for $5. Hey, yo, making it rain over here. Hecklefish is the perfect antagonist based, LOL. Now, this is an idea I can get behind. Love the show, and Aerial School is one of my favorite stories. Thanks, Dr. Gonzo. Yeah, he says some stuff, but I, w I wish, wish he wouldn't say some of that stuff about all the climate change. I don't want to get in trouble because of something that that idiot says. There's Eric. There's Eric for $20. Top three YouTube channel out right now. Thanks so much for what you do. That's Maybe we're in the top 10, but definitely not in the top three. Thank you, Eric. We appreciate that. Thank you, Eric. Permo Fit. 99. Look into the book, Alien Interview. You know, the, the, the super chats come in, and I appreciate we need the super chats, so we appreciate them. But sometimes they come in with homework. You see that? <laughs> like, here's a 999 super chat. Here's three books for you to read. 
All right, so look into the book Alien Interview, edited by Lawrence Spencer. It ties a lot of this stuff together. Simulation Theory, Aliens, Hitchhiker's Guide, and the Galaxy Kinda. All right. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon. That sounds like a book I want to read. Um, Alien Interview, Lawrence Spencer. Okay, copy of two letters, top secret military transcripts and notes from the late Matilda O'Donnell McElroy, an Army Air Force nurse at the Roswell Army Airfield 509th Bomb Group in 1947. We know about her. In her letters, she asserts that the transcripts are an exact recording of a series of interviews she conducted with an extraterrestrial being as part of her official duty as a flight nurse in the U.S. Army Air Force. Uh, during July and August, she interviewed a saucer pilot who crashed near Roswell, New Mexico in July 8, 1947. The being she interviewed identified itself as an officer, pilot, and engineer with an invasion force from a civilization she refers to as the Domain. The spacecraft used the planet Venus and the asteroid belt as spaceports in our solar system. The Milky Way galaxy is a tiny area within the territorial possessions of the Domain. The interview transcripts were kept secret under threat of death by Nurse McElroy for 60 years and released a few months before her passing at age 83. Add to cart. Boop. Add to cart. Good call on that. The domain. Weren't those the enemies from Deep Space Nine? Yes. That's the Dominion. That's Dominion. Here's Dustin King, 1999. Oh, thank you for stuffing the old tip jar, human. You did a great job. I watched Phenomenon earlier today. And of course, the therapist being an environment. Oh, pardon me. That's not professional. This is not a professional live stream. Um, so the Phenomenon, that's James Fox's uh, documentary. Definitely watch that. We use some clips of, of that tonight. And there's also another documentary called Aerial Phenomenon or Aerial Phenomena. That's that. The, the Phenomenon documentary, James's documentary, just has a little chunk of it is to the story. But if you liked this this Zimbabwe story, aerial phenomenon is a full hour and a half. It should have been forty five minutes of this story, and there's a link in the uh, in the description where you can go watch that. I think you have to buy it, but uh, no sponsor, no affiliate. I just I used a lot of his stuff, so I thought at least we could throw a little action his way. All right, this is how to avoid over talking. I see that you would like to weigh in. What do you got? And Dustin is the one that created the amazing belt for us, the championship belt. What? Yeah, Dustin right. made these? Yep. Mm -hmm. Look at this. We got two of these, right? We do. This is a real thing. Like, this is this weighs a few pounds. <laughs> this is, Dustin, do you sell these? Can we, uh, I mean, do we shout out his shop or something? I mean, you got to talk about a Christmas gift to remember, right? You get your family a, a custom championship belt amazing it's beautiful and dustin if you make chastity belts let me know dm me i need one of those there is richard Bl bramlett aka hybrid i from what i heard richard was out in the world and was wearing a y-file shirt and it Jenny, can you tell what happened? So he was out and about, and he, the person at the desk where he was that, that was checking him in saw his shirt and said, oh, my God, I'm a huge Y-Files fan. And they somehow got to talking about Discord, and he said something about him being hybrid. And the guy was like, oh, my God, you're like Discord famous. It was very exciting. So he got recognized from our Discord. So it was very cool. Did he no. sign autographs or like sign his, his breast with a Sharpie or something? He did. He pulled the Ron Jeremy. He signed his boob with a Sharpie. But I really, I don't want Richard Bramlett uh, super chatting. We should be paying him <laughs> for the work he does. But I do appreciate everyone's support tonight. It really does help the channel. But uh, before I let you go. What is our word tonight? 
Fawcett 98, uh, what about the China airline incident? I covered that last week. The guy, was in his, you. Yeah, the guy was in his sixth, uh, sixth loop. Somebody said our word should be, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Matt Hunt, tonight's code should be C-I-A-J. <laughs> Love it. No, we can't do nice beaver. We can't, we can't do nice beaver. Did we do nice beaver last week? We did. Yeah. All right, so here's how it works. Um, we type hi, da, how, how dare you in the chat. Just just how dare you. Nothing else, no spaces. Just how dare you. And uh, someone will be picked randomly, and you're going to win. What, what do they win besides uh, a, a conversation with Victoria? Victoria, what do they win? A heck of a Yay! <laughs> Did this work? And how long, how much time can they have with you? None. On, no, on Zoom. They don't get <laughs> Zoom time with her. Just the plushie, that's it? Yes. Isn't that awesome? All right, well, you get the plushie. If you, if you win and you would like some time with Victoria, you let me know and I'll take care of that. <laughs> so how dare you is... All right, well, everyone can spell this, so it's not quite as fun. Well, we'll do a couple super chats in the meanwhile. There's Joe P, the official beard of the Wi Files. Fascinating. Never heard of this one. Great episode. Three other John Max within the same name were killed in the same day. Systematic coincidence. I couldn't confirm that. That was a piece of data that Dan Aykroyd <laughs> said on Joe Rogan um, uh, that, that Zeb the Superfan found. I looked into it, I couldn't find it, but it was too juicy. You have to say it. It's Dan Aykroyd. He's. He knows. He was in Ghostbusters. <laughs> There's Jordan for 10 Canadian. I interviewed an AI company five years ago that could detect blood flow in people's faces in any video to detect if they are lying. I'm trying to contact them to try the tech on alien witness videos. That's a great idea. Wow. Um, yeah, he's, he's describing tech that really does exist. Where they – and it, intelligence uses some of that stuff now. They check pupil dilation – your, your breathing, perspiration, all that stuff. They don't really need a, a lie detector because you are one. Yeah, well, if you're in the midst um, of a hot flash. Austin Ramsdale, tell Austin Ramsdale, time with Victoria will not win, but that, that is very funny. I missed it. Keep us posted, Jordan. Captain America is here. Hey, Cap. Uh, great show. Have you considered doing a bit about all the recent whistleblowers, et cetera, suddenly dying, getting hit by cars, et cetera? Yeah, remember, um, so so Dr. Matt got hit by a car in London. It was about 11.30, 11.40 at night. But remember, Carl Wolf was the whistleblower from the moon pictures that was going to testify that he didn't he didn't make it. There's a, There's a lot of those. I don't, you know, Cap. I did uh, a video with the with the people who got really unlucky after claiming they had free energy inventions, free energy devices, cars that run on water, cars that run on water. I, you know, we had an episode with a whole long list of those, and it's easy to find those names because uh, a thousand people have copied that video on TikTok. So those are out there right now. Uh, Revenge of the Beavers will not work. How dare you lizard people won't work. That's funny, though. Good hair, you. I appreciate that, but that will not work. Why truth me? How die are do? So maybe, Cap, maybe we'll do something like that. There's Robert Prather. It's a big supporter of the channel. Great video. Makes me wonder where these kids are today. Has anyone interviewed them recently? Right on about government. Totally right. As always, thanks for the hard work. Yeah, so the aerial phenomenon video, phenomena, phenomena, do, 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 at that video, that documentary, it basically follows one of those kids from Canada. She goes back to the school for a reunion. I think he shot it about 10 years ago. And it just came out a year or two ago. So... He interviews a bunch of these kids. And also in the Phenomenon in Fox's documentary, he has some of the kids grown up as well. 
you know, it's not that long ago. It's not like they're old people trying to remember. They're in their 20s, some of them. There is D Carruthers, $5. Yes, thank you, human. You know the deal. We have a shark week, but when do we get a hecklefish week? This human knows what's up. I don't know. All right, so we're going to... Uh, D Carruthers, if you plan that out, you, you, you build the format and email that over. We'll see what we can do. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pick our winner here. Who, see who gets some some private time with Victoria, and then we will go into some of the congressional hearings. How's that sound? We're ready to pick. Yep. Let's do it. Uh, there's Kate, Brian, there's Jacob, Wynn, Win, Canton, Ed, four twenty, Chris, Laura, Sean, Clifford Jones, Noom, Dragonfly, Hey Yoki. Hey, Yoke, Hey, Yoke, XD. Hey, Yoke, Smiley, Star. Yay! Yay! All right, so what does Hey, Yoke have to do to, to get that special date with you? Come to Discord and put in a help desk ticket with your name and email, and I'll get with you. Get you help. You know, Jenny, you say that, that people, that the winners don't get time with Victoria, but she doesn't help matters because when she describes what they do to reclaim their prize. She uses this kind of this come hither voice. Have you noticed that? <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of deep and, and it's kind of breathy. That's just how Victoria talks. Oh. oh. So, yeah. I know. Okay. All right. So congratulations to Hey Yoke, Screamy, Screamy Smiley, uh, asterisk. <laughs> I mean, is that, that's how you say it? I don't know. All right, last one before we go is Sunny A for $50. Oh, 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 oh. Big TV swimming in my waist. Send me money, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl, it's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl, it's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's bloated. Please tip me, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl. I cut off there. Uh, uh, Sunny A, completely with you on the burden of proof needing to be more than trust me, bro, testimony. The day we know for sure we will have entered a new age, like the BCE slash CE slash AD. After disclosure, level of historical significance, 100% right. Sunny A, 100% right as always. All right, we'll check in with you guys in a little bit for, G for Gino Story Hour. Bye. It's a big one, it's a big one tonight, right? Big Gino story hour. Appreciate the support, Sonny. And thanks to everyone who's super chatting tonight. It really does help the channel. Um, if you don't have your Hecklefish plushie yet, go get one of those. If you order, I don't know. Him, uh, would you kindly fetch my tinfoil hat? He actually comes with his own tinfoil hat. You, so you could put that on, on him yourself. Or sometimes you just let him bear back whatever you want to do. So if you order him soon, you'll be in the first batch of those that are coming in shortly. It's a great way to support the channel. T-shirts are on there. We try to keep them cheap. All the mugs are 100% fistable, so you know uh, you know they're good. If you'd like to get a little closer, don't be shy with the channel. Become a Patreon member for his, it's you could we I mean Paul's a Patreon member for a, a lot of money a month, but for three bucks you could support the channel. You get early access to stuff like the Hecklefish plushie. Um, get special recognition on Discord. And you get two extra live streams a week. So on Thursdays, before we go, um, before we launch the premiere, we jump on Discord, the whole team and I, and we just talk to everybody. And you can put your webcam on. And then we'll do that again tomorrow morning. So rather than try to communicate with us through the crazy chat, if you're in the Discord live stream, it, there's not that many people there. So everyone gets a chance to talk. All right, Sonny, I appreciate you. So it... 
here's here's David Grush's opening statement. This is an important issue, and I'm grateful. Before we get started, all the clips I pulled are, are I tried to find the shortest ones I could with time code where I could to keep them just a few minutes each. I'm going to keep my eye on the chat to see what you guys think. We'll do. We'll do what is Victoria putting in the chat? That's crazy. I in inter inter at inter at, Jenny. What is she doing in there? Int at. Did did she stroke out? Did she go full Mitch McConnell on us? She stroked out. Somebody check on her. Do someone do a welfare check on Victoria? She's just. I think she 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 had a stroke and just it's her, her forehead is typing things. Is she all right? She's fine. No, look, look. She's fine. <laughs> what was she doing? I'm, I'm calling nine one one. I'm calling nine one one. Jake Best Victoria has officially lost her mind. Finally. Pebbles likes a George nap. Wagman thinks it's the crab cat. Could be. If you're the crab cat. Crab cat. Omega Dash tells Victoria, blink twice if you're under duress. <laughs> you made her wheeze. You made her wheeze. She got cut back on those Paul Malls. Lisa Lapp, did he say, did they say he had a stroke? Mitch looked like it. The last I heard news wise was he said he got lightheaded by the heat. That didn't look like that to me, but you know, I don't mean to, to poke fun. That joke kind of spilled out before my brain could catch it. Still funny though. For Boston, you don't believe the whistleblower guy. Yeah, we're going to get into it. I'll keep an eye on the chat. We can, we can analyze and discuss. But here's his opening statement. This is an important issue, and I'm grateful for your time. My name is David Charles Grush. I was an intelligence officer for 14 years, in the, both in the U.S. Air Force, uh, both active duty Air National Guard and Reserve, at the rank of major, and most recently from 2021 to 2025, or excuse me, 2023, uh, at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NGA, uh, at the GS-15 civilian level, which is uh, the military equivalent of a full bird colonel. I was my agency's co-lead in unidentified anomalous phenomena and transmedium object analysis, as well as reporting to the UAP task force, UAPTF, uh, and eventually, once it was established, uh, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, ARO. I became a whistleblower through a PPD-19 urgent concern filing in uh, May 2022 uh, with the Intelligence Community Inspector General. Uh, following concerning reports from multiple esteemed and credentialed current and former military and intelligence community individuals that the U.S. government is operating with secrecy above congressional oversight uh, with regards to UAPs. My testimony is based on information I've been given by individuals with a long-standing track record of legitimacy and service to this country many of whom also have shared compelling evidence in the form of photography, official documentation, and classified oral testimony to myself and many co my various colleagues. I have taken every step I can to corroborate this evidence over a period of four years while I was with the UAP task force and do my due diligence on the individual sharing it. Uh, this is because of these steps, I believe strongly uh, in the importance of bringing this information before you. I am driven by a commitment of both uh, to truth and transparency, rooted in our inherent duty to uphold the United States Constitution and protect the American people. I'm asking Congress to hold our government to this standard and thoroughly investigate these claims. But as I stand here under oath now, I am speaking to the facts as I've been told them. In the U.S. Air Force, in my National Reconnaissance Office, NRO, Reservist Capacity, I was a member of the UAP Task Force from 2019 to 2021. I served at the NRO Operations Center on the Director's Briefing Staff, which included the coordination of the Presidential Daily Brief and supporting variety of contingency operations, which I was the Reserve Intelligence Division Chief uh, backup. In 2019, the UAP Task Force Director 
asked me to identify all special access programs and controlled access programs, also known as SAPs and CAPs, uh, we needed to satisfy our congressionally mandated mission and we were direct report at the time to the DepSec Dev. At the time, due to my extensive executive level intelligence support duties, I was cleared to literally all uh, relevant compartments and in a position of extreme. Fawcett 98, he can't lie under oath. I'm glad you're watching, but you are adorable. Trust both of my military and civilian capacities. Uh, I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program, uh, to which I was denied access to those additional read-ons when I uh, requested it. I made the decision based on the data I collected to report this information to my superior, superiors and multiple inspectors general, and in effect becoming a whistleblower. As you know, I've suffered Retaliation for my decision, uh, but I am hopeful that my actions will ultimately lead uh, to a positive outcome of uh, increased transparency. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thank Shut up, George. All right, so we have to remember that everything he says has been pre-approved by the Pentagon Department of Defense. Jet Mech, what is the Discord? It's uh, go to thewifehouse.com slash Discord. That works. Everything that... that that Grush says is approved by the Pentagon and the DOD, and he admits he admits it freely. So um, what he has to do, he has to write out everything that he's going to discuss, and then the Pentagon looks at it, confirms that there's nothing uh, of concern to national security, and then he can go and say it. So that doesn't sound like whistleblowing to me. That sounds like PR. Um. Yeah, someone in the chat said, come on, Corbell, go and buy a suit. He's looking kind of cash back there, isn't he? I mean, the beard looks good, but looking kind of cash. And George does look a little bit sleepy. Mr. Birdie thinks lizard people are in the background. Mike and Murph, could he actually be trying to fool our adversaries into thinking we have technology greater than we do for intimidation? That could be. Aetonum thinks Aetonum thinks is the start of Blue Beam. I don't, you know, I'm not a big believer in Blue Beam, but it, it could be the start of something. Uh, Lisa Lapp says he does say he's in fear of his life. He does say that. And look, I'm I'm not gonna just crap on the guy's testimony because he says plenty of things that are that are crazy crazy in that you would believe him like he's fears for his life that he's been harassed he's been threatened and so forth but again everything is is approved and some of the language he uses is feels like it's he's trying to throw us off a trail so if if remember richard doty from the from the paul benowitz case paul benowitz this is, goes back in the 80s. I don't know if you've seen that episode. It's the Dulce Base episode. So Paul Benowitz sees a bunch of lights at the Air Force Base next door to his house. And he's a former military guy, and he's, and he's a military contractor. So he knows all the stuff. He knows all the people at the base. He's not like a, a weird guy in town. He's involved in, with the Air Force. Sees a bunch of weird stuff, lights in the sky, craft moving around. And he goes and, and he reports it to the base. And Benowitz has gone down in history as kind of a crazy guy who sees UFOs and aliens everywhere. That's not the, tr the whole truth. He ended up that way, but that's not how he started. When he first saw the lights and stuff, he was concerned that it was experimental aircraft, that he was afraid that the military was being kind of too open about it. So he was going there saying, look, from, from my neighborhood, I can see all this crazy stuff in the sky. Enter Richard Doty and the Office of Air Force and uh, uh, of OSI, right? They go to Benowitz and say, oh, you're these are UFOs, man. You're seeing UFOs. We've got to keep this quiet. This is between us. It's UFOs. And then, you know, Benowitz is like, what? And then he goes, 
he starts hearing aliens over like his radio, which turned out to be the NSA camped in the house across the street, transmitting to him. And he went kind of off the deep end. And, and that man was sacrificed to keep him from f- looking into experimental aircraft. So that's why there was d- a disinformation campaign. Is this the same thing? That's, that, there's a few theories. That's one of them is that if as long as we are looking at this guy and this stuff, we're not looking at what's going on over here, that the Tic Tac is maybe a special Air Force project that's compartmentalized. So, you know, the guys flying don't know what it is. So it's like, just tell the American people it's aliens. Just tell them it's aliens so we can get back to work. That's a theory. Now, I've said this over and over. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. I believe in aliens. I believe in UFOs. I believe that the the United States has all that stuff. I believe all that stuff. But I don't believe military and military intelligence people and don't believe spokesmen for the government. And if everything that you say is approved by the Department of Defense, well, guess what? You're not a whistleblower. You're a spokesman. And I, I'm leery of that. I want to be wrong. Just approach all this stuff with a skeptical eye. Duke Lake says much, much, much bigger. Joker 2465 testimony is approved. That's correct. Now, and and look, the other side of that story is he did submit a bunch of information in private to Congress. And we don't really know what that is, but we know that names have been named and uh, some of the corporations involved have been listed. And even when he kind of hints that someone was maybe killed, he says, well, that I can't talk about that, but that is something that I, I, I submitted information and reported at the proper authorities. 08 AOC says, AJ, you should be looking into Antarctica. Check out the Operation High Jump video. we get into a lot of stuff there. Um, but a bigger video is coming up on Antarctica soon when we're going to get into Eric Hecker and his stuff. If you're asking about that, then you know who Eric Hecker is. All right, we've got... Uh, Congressman Burchett here with a great statement. If I can get it to work. You know, we've got always oh, got technical issues. Yikes. You call this a live stream? How are you not embarrassed? I am. I am embarrassed, Cap. All right. Here's Tim. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. Thank you all for being here. Um, I want to thank everybody for making this happen today. And I want to remind everybody, this is a nonpartisan issue. This has nothing to do with party politics. I think uh, the cover up goes a lot deeper than that. I also want to thank my colleagues, uh, Representative Anna Polina Luna sitting beside me here, Jared Moskowitz, my friend across the aisle, who has an incredible mind and I'm anxious to hear his questions. My buddy, Eric Burleson, and um, it's not in my notes here, but Matt Gates. If it hadn't been for Matt Gates, myself, him, and Luna would still be down at Eglin Air Force Base trying to get some answers. I'll pause him here because Burchett does a lot of asides and jokes and stuff. Um, but I just saw in the chat uh, a good point. Duck Prince, he comes across like someone very well rehearsed. Yeah, if you look at the if you look at Grush's first interview, I keep forgetting was it News Nation or was it News Max? I think it was News Nation. His first interview, he was kind of shaky. I still didn't like it. I still was suspicious of it. It was kind of shaky. And now with this one, he's very smooth, isn't it? Like he's been, I don't know, rehearsing it in a mirror or been working with media training, which military intel definitely does. Teaches you how to speak and what to speak. He's got an incredible legal mind. Also, uh, I know I saw it in the crowd there, George Knapp. My buddy Jeremy Corbell, um, uh, they're not witnesses, but they've uh, provided some statements on this subject, and I seek unanimous consent to enter those statements into the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Uh, Chance, maybe he's intelligence or counterintelligence. He's in. He has operated in both in his career. His last was counterintel, and counterintel is, by definition, in the United States military, disinformation. That's what they do. Also, would like to enter in. I understand now that this is unclassified and it's public record, but as we all know, that's sometimes difficult for the public to get a hold of. A report, Defense Intelligence 
uh, reference document is advanced space propulsion based on vacuum, space-time metric engineering, some light reading for some of our members. Without objection. Thank you. Um, you know, Mr. Knapp wrote, since 1969, the position of our military has been that UFOs pose no threat to national security and are not wor worthy of further study. I'd say that's the biggest understatement of the decade. Um, and he also goes on to talk about the dismissive attitude and said odds with what was revealed in documents, reports, and internal memos. Mr. Cabrell says, uh, as, as he writes these words, the UFO is emerging as a major topic of global importance. Um, I, I can state that as a fact out there. I met a fellow who came in here all the way from Denmark to be here for this, this meeting. So this is huge. This is worldwide. I think we, um, we suspect what's going on, but I'd also like to thank the members of Congress who have supported our efforts to make this hearing happen. Some have even confided to me that they've had UFO sightings of their own. Those members, of course, some of them wish to remain anonymous and I'll keep it that way. But also, finally, I'd like to thank the, these three brave witnesses here. They took an oath, they took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and dadgummit, they're doing it. And we owe them a debt of gratitude. Yes, sir. Y'all y'all quit clapping, you're cutting in on my time. <laughs> Just kidding. These folks, they've got nothing to gain from this. And I think you're going to find out that they've endured quite a few slings and arrows. We need to remember them in our prayers and their families. And I'm thankful them for their honest testimonies. They have done interviews and appeared in documentaries like Accidental Truth to get their stories out there. To, and, and now they are all here to testify under oath for Congress. I, it's been so difficult to get here today. I said, you know, in the Baptist church, we'd say that the devil's in our way. And um, the devil has been in our way through this thing. We've, we've run into roadblocks from members, from the intelligence community, the Pentagon. I proposed legislation to go in the FAA uh, reauthorization that just said if a uh, if an airline pilot uh, has a sighting that when he makes that report to the FAA that it would come to Congress. But I was told that the intelligence community did not like that and the bill was, an amendment was not even heard in committee. I think it's time for this country to take back our country. We need to tell the folks at the Pentagon, they work for us, dadgummit, we don't work for them. And that's exactly the point. This is an issue of government transparency. We can't trust a government that does not trust its people. We're not bringing little green men or flying saucers into the hearing. Sorry to disappoint about half y'all. We're just going to get to the facts. We're going to uncover the cover up. And I hope this is just the beginning of many more hearings and more people coming forward about this. And I yield back the remainder of my time. Um, I think, is it to Representative Luna, Mr. Chairman? Or is that he's hokey, but he's an ally. If you're into, if you want disclosure, he's an ally, no matter, you know, whatever political affiliation you have he's an ally and um he's he's the only one who says that that one line they work for us so he's in congress he's on the committee he's on the oversight committee that means they have oversight and he says i want this information and they say no and he says no 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 i'm on the oversight committee we don't care you can't have it national security no can do but but take it up with someone else. No can do. And that's what they won't provide a skiff. So there that's that's why it was a very frustrating. Because you can see the frustration with some of the politicians on both sides of the aisle. Like we ask for stuff, they won't provide it. Melissa Johnson, you're a little late, but how dare you, madam? How dare you? Okay, here's Nancy May. She's she's good on this issue. You know, and I know that they're quote unquote whistleblowers and the congressmen are trying to be respectful. But if I were up there, I would I would want to make Grush a little bit uncomfortable. Like just ask questions. Try to get him out of his comfort zone and see see how much information can be had. I mean, because she, be, I mean, I know that she's not going to do that because she believes that she's going to get the true information later, but she's not going to get it. 
So I would, you know, make make him a little uncomfortable. Ms. Mays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to our witnesses who are testifying today. I want to thank each of you for being here to discuss a topic of grave importance to our national security. Earlier this year, a Chinese spy balloon was shot down off the coast of my home state of South Carolina. Since the Roswell incident in 1947, many Americans have wondered about the dangers of unknown objects crisscrossing our skies. Whether these are UAPs or weather phenomena, advanced technology from American allied or enemy forces or something more out of this world. So my first question, I have several questions and I'll, I, if we can just be quick on these first two, I'm gonna ask each of you the same question um, and then I'll get to each of you individually. Uh, the first one, when you reported your experiences with a UAP, did any of you face any repercussions with your superiors, yes or no? No. No. I've actually never seen anything personally, believe it or not. So. <laughs> All right. Um, and then do, do you believe there's an active disinformation campaign within our government to deny existence of UAPs, yes or no? I don't have an answer to that. As previ previously stated publicly, yes. Yes, yeah, so that's a skiff. It's basically a room they go into, no phones, no electronics, no cameras, nothing like that. So that's, that, that's, that's what the skiff is. I think previously it was like Project Blue Book, yes, but currently I don't speak for the United States government. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions for Mr. Graves. Um, what percentage of UAP sightings, in your belief, go unreported by our pilots? This is an approximation based off of my personal experience speaking with a number of pilots, but I would estimate we're somewhere near 5% reporting, perhaps. So like 95% basically don't report seeing UAPs. That's just my personal estimate. Um, in the incident off Virginia Beach, do you believe the Navy took the danger to your aircraft seriously after it was reported? Absolutely. Um, a few questions for Mr. Favor. As an expert naval aviator, have you ever seen an object that looked and moved like the Tic Tac UAP? No. Did the Tic Tac UAP move in such a way that defied the laws of physics? The way we understand them, yes. Many dismiss UAP reports as classified weapons testing by our own government, but in your experience as a pilot, does our government typically test advanced weapon systems right next to multi-million dollar jets without informing our pilots? No, we have test ranges for that. It took over 15 years for your encounter with the Tic Tac to be declassified. Do you feel there was a good reason to prevent lawmakers from having access to this footage? No, I just think it was ignored when it happened, and it just sat somewhere in a file, never got reported. In a drawer. It happens a lot up here. <laughs> Shocker. Um, Mr. Gresh, a couple of questions for you, too, sir, this morning. Um, what percentage of UAPs do you feel are adequately investigated by the U.S. government, of the 5% that are reported? <laughs> um, I can only speak for uh, my personal leadership over at NGA. I tried to look at every report that came through that I could mm -hmm. triage, so... Do you believe that officials at the highest levels of our national security apparatus have unlawfully withheld information from Congress and subverted uh, our oversight authority? There are certain elected leaders that had more information that I'm not sure what they've shared with certain Gang of Eight members or et cetera, but uh, certainly uh, I would not be surprised. Okay. You've stated that the government is in possession of potentially non-human spacecraft. Based on your experience and extensive conversations with experts, do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent extraterrestrials? Something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> if you believe we have crashed craft uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Biologics. Do you, uh, was, when did you hear that word before the past few weeks? Biologics. Airplane Willie, the more I think about this hearing, the more I get pissed off about it. Same. Um, were they, I guess, human or non human biologics? Non human. And that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness? Like, how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. 
So, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about mm -hmm. UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I like can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield back. I'd like to see that list. Um, Niall. Niall M. You did some backwards recording on that. I agree. So kind of getting into that the government is hiding and that's look that's going that's really the biggest takeaway from the hearings is that the government's hiding stuff. We're not going to get uh specific super crazy movie geek hostile witnesses. Yes, we want those. We want those. Uh Scrungy says a banana is non-human by <laughs> Biologics. That's true. Victor, SpaceX launch in 43 minutes. All right, I, I could try to wrap it up by then. Hecklefish is a hostile witness confirmed. Finally, a human who gets it. All right, here's Anna Polina Luna. Former Instagram model, now a congresswoman. Why not? The circumstances surrounding UAPs has captivated the attention of the American people for decades, ingrained in even the minds of our nation's leaders from Jimmy Carter to Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump, Marco Rubio to Chuck Schumer, John Radcliffe to National Security Council officials. Yet from Roswell, New Mexico to the coast of Jacksonville, Florida, the sightings of UAPs have rarely been explained by the people who have firsthand accounts of these situations. This is largely due to the lack of transparency by our own government and the failure of our elected leaders to make good on their promises to release explanations and footage and mountains of overclassified documents that continue to be hidden from the American people. This isn't just how I feel. In fact, the American people largely believe that the government has actively covered up the truth about UAPs. One poll in particular found that 68% of Americans believe that the government is hiding information about UAPs and not being honest about what we know about them. And from Bruno Bizarro, so is the rest of the world hiding UAP as well? Yes, they are. Um, any country that takes money from the United States government, if there's a UAP crash or something, the United States handles it. And that's been that case since at least since the, the 50s where Italy had that big crash. So if you take money from the United States government, the, they will have authority over that crash. And you know which countries take money from the United States government? My personal experience, oh. I believe the same thing. Another poll found that nearly half Americans believe that the federal government is doing a very bad or somewhat bad job of dealing with reports of UFO sightings. As Representative Burchett just referenced on the FA bill that just went through, you can tell that that's exactly happening. Considering the thousands of testimonies and videos taken on people's phones and eyewitnesses accounts made by credible witnesses such as doctors, pilots, scientists, and active duty service members, it is unacceptable to continue to gaslight Americans into thinking that this is not happening or that the potential of intelligent, uh, intelligent life forms exists other than humans. Even more alarming is the fact that these eyewitnesses are many of times service members and have no assurance that their lives will not be negatively impacted or even harmed by their experiences. In being an active duty service member working on an airfield, I've had conversations with many pilots where they were in fear of coming forward for retribution and or being taken off flight status. How do we know this? Because the government has said nothing to assure us otherwise. They have also did nothing to, um, to calm the concerns of over 20% of Americans who have reported to have seen UFOs or UAPs. We are simply told not to question the government and that the government has it under control. Today is the first hearing of its kind where we will attempt to get down to the bottom of what is actually happening with UAPs. But we will hear from people who have had personal sightings rather than Pentagon bureaucrats who have always been sent to stonewall our investigations. Just so that the press knows and the people know, 
we were even denied access to a classified briefing in a skiff prior to this hearing due to the amount of hoops that we had to jump through to grant temporary clearance to witness Grush, who has knowledge of classified information. It is time to have an open-minded discussion on this topic, to hear the evidence and understand the magnitude of what this means, not just for our nation, but for humanity. Thank you, Chairman. I yield back the rest of my time. That strategy inc included is correct. Trenton, Trenton's open to hearing her out this hearing. Lovely heart eyes. <laughs> Hey, Lee Martin, she's got four skin suits behind her. Well, she can kind of read. Yeah, she wasn't that compelling. But I like Congress people talking about the government cover-up. Grant, five eyes, that's correct. Those are all the English-speaking nations, the five eyes. That's the, that's the group of, of nations that collaborate on spying on their citizens. So those are United States, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Those are the five eyes. Tony, I, you know, I know I, Tony Williams says fake lips is a patriot or not. I, I, yeah, the, the lips bother me too. That, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that facelift before the facelift look. Look, she, and she didn't need to do that. She's 33, 34. She didn't need to do that so soon. You right? know, she was in, like, she was in the armed forces. Uh, yeah, she, I, I think she, she was. was a, I, well, she went to the Citadel. Uh -huh. But I don't think, did she actually serve? I don't know if she saw combat, but I was just looking her up. I don't know. I if mean, she did obviously she go, didn't see combat, but. No. She didn't see combat. I, just, I think she was the first woman at the Citadel, but I don't know if she actually went into the service, on into active duty. Did she? I'm looking to see. Oh, you're um, looking. Our Roger mm -hmm. says yes. Yeah. So, Red Pool, like, when are you going to... Go ahead. You go ahead. No, what are you going to say? I'll, I'll queue up the next video here. Someone wants to hear Matt Gates. Matt Gates, so I have him ready to go. Ready to go. So, yes, I mean, did she say she didn't sound like it sounded like somebody wrote that for her and she read it. Um, but, you know, she wasn't necessarily an Instagram model. She worked for Turning Point as like their head of Hispanic outreach. So she was an influencer for sure. She was. But, you know, that's what happens now. That's how, that's how people get into politics. It is. That's my mom's congresswoman right there. <clears throat> but, yeah. All right, I'm going to let you go. But you, your, your shirt's falling off, off there, showing a lot of skin. Let's get that squared away. Here she goes. She goes. As you can do it. If you're not going to do a sexy dance, then fix it. You can. <laughs> I think that is a new on the sexy dance. All right, someone wanted to see Matt Gates. Here you go. Several months ago, my office received a protected disclosure from Eglin Air Force. Cody Welch, Matt Gates has Botox now, I think. He does. But his is his a little is a little nicer. It's a little more subtle. I don't know who his guy is, but I want to know. indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. Uh, we asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that... Uh, I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and Advanced Technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, 
And when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico. And when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace. Not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side, and you can go back to your history of things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar on the aircraft when it tried to do it. And the only way we could see it is passively, which is how he got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. And, and how should we think about four craft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another um, in a diamond? In, in all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT FLIR system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system. And, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. It just goes to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a U of AP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people, and that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would observe that perhaps as we, uh, as we move forward from this hearing, there are some obvious next steps. Every person watching this knows that we need to meet with Mr. Grush in a secure compartmentalized facility so that we can get fulsome answers that do not put him in jeopardy and that, and that give us the information we need. Second, I would suggest that the radar images from, um, that were collected of this formation of craft out of Eglin Air Force Base, and specifically the actual image taken by the actual flight crew that we can actually validate um, be provided to the committee, subpoenaed if necessary, um, so that we're able to track how to get this type of reporting and analysis done in a more fulsome way. That would be my recommendation, humbly, as a guest here of the Fine Oversight Committee. I yield back. Yes, please. We'll, we'd like some pictures of that. Um, someone wondering if they found Space Panda out there. I don't think they found him yet. Double back again. Why would aliens bother with us? They probably wouldn't. That's. I mean, we've been, we've read a couple of stories the past few weeks on on this show from different. I wouldn't call them whistleblowers, but people that have come forward that worked in retrieval, and the stories all kind kind of line up with. Aliens are here. They don't care about us. They're here for the resources water, gold, other stuff like that. They don't care about us, but when we do things that threaten the planet, like drop nuclear bombs, they're not that cool with that. So then they get involved, but otherwise they look at it, look at us like we're in a zoo. We're just these destructive, crazy, primitive monkeys that are just in their way. 
and that if it got to the point where we would prevent them from collecting the resources they're here to collect, they would just get rid of us. And that would be that. Michelle McClone thinks we're the zoo to the aliens. Yeah. And that's, that's what a couple of people have said. You would imagine being so small minded, you believe in nothing. There's no one here that, that fits that description, Yoda. We're all believers here. We just want the truth. John Pearson, we are a resource. Yeah, he's talking about it's a cookbook. It's people. That's a great uh, Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> hey, Taryn, what, what if we, we are the resource? Yeah, I, but I, I don't think we are. I don't think we are. Because they would just have us. All right, a couple of quick super chats, uh, and then we're going to get to uh, Fra Fravers. Great scene. There he is. Fravers pretty good. He's he's interesting. This it seems like a guy you want to sit and have a little cocktail or two with. You're like David, come on, it's just us. It's just us. Tell him what happened. What happened? I feel like he would he would he would say. It. But there's Darth Hispanicus. Thank you for supporting the channel. Dar Darth Hispanicus. Do you think the U.S. government is getting the citizens ready for new alien leadership? I say this due to all the release of extraterrestrial evidence. No, Darth, I don't believe that one bit. I think we're basically just animals taking up space. But look, nobody knows because we can't, we can't get to the truth. But if... If there was a, a large alien presence here just harvesting resources from the earth that viewed the human race as just animals that may be in the way, that's a reason to not tell folks. So I hope that's not it, but I, I kind of feel like it, that it might be. There's Drunken Pumpkin for 50 bucks. A Monday goldfish lives in style. But you haven't tipped in quite a while. My money is all spent. You haven't tipped a cent. I gotta pay my rent. Or I'll be living in a tent. In Portland. You don't want to be living in a tent in Portland. Or you don't want to be living in a tent in Seattle either. Follow, you follow that on the news? Crazy stuff going on in Seattle. Throwing bombs into tents. Drunken Bumpkin, just 50 bucks. Appreciate what you do. Perfect. Perfect super chat right there. $50 helps keep the channel going. Keeps the content coming. No homework. Just appreciate, man. Appreciate you. Here's Basiqua. Very consistent support of the channel. The hearing can only be bland and boring and old. Otherwise, Orwellian mayhem will ensue and cats will marry dogs, obviously. Cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. And there is blank canvas dash life wanderers. Sounds like you've got a YouTube channel. Could you imagine if aliens came here now and asked to be taken to our leader? Great show. Ask Gino. If he knows where I can get some coffee. Hmm. All right. Talk, talk about blowing a chance for a plug, but uh, I think you can go to Caveman Coffee Co. Blank canvas dash life wanders. And there's Tim McAlpine. Thank you for all you do. Love how you give both sides and want to be deep in, you want to be in deep in Mel's Hole too, huh? I Bell's Hole has got room for, for both of us, man. We can get right in there. We can we can we can plumb the depths. There's Thomas Cobble, seventy four. Thank you for five dollars. Thank you for the hairstyle, rock and roll. Lock right? Of seagulls. Lock of seagulls. I ran and space age love song. Those are the only ones I know. You're singing. Yeah. You're singing one in your head right now, right? I ran. You're singing. All right, go ahead. And I ran. Mm -hmm. I ran so far away. That one? Do you know, do they say I ran? Uh, I think so. They say, they say I ran. Oh. Well, I think I ran so far, right? Couldn't yeah. get away. Couldn't get away. 
Oh, they say Iran. Yeah, they, they, that's what they sound like. I, I thought I was missing something like like uh, we had some some kind of uh, glitch in the matrix here, and I I didn't know what the words originally were. <laughs> Uh, we're now in copyright uh, territory, huh? Yeah. I really blew it. I blew it. I think you're all blew right. Ah, oh, we're fine. I am only teasing. Besides, we got the support of of Thomas Caldwell seventy four. How do you think the people who react to the truth coming out? Our society at large is ready to know the truth. Hecklefish impersonating Greta equals comedy goad. I thought it was funny too. How dare you? How do you think people would react to the truth coming out? I think. Honestly, Thomas, most people would freak out. Even the people who are like, no, I'm definitely ready, would freak out. Go ahead. Look, Victoria and I were talking about this the other day. Yesterday, I think it was. The thing is, is we've been having alien sightings on this planet for how many years? All of them. All of them. So they've been here. Like, if they were going to do something and take over the planet and enslave us or eat us or whatever it is that they were going to do, don't you think they would have done it by now? Don't you think they would have done it during World War One, World War Two, any of that kind of craziness if they were worried about us destroying the planet? Like, I feel like they're just, you know, they're here, they're watching, whatever. But I feel like they're us from, like, the future, maybe. I don't know. They're getting worse at playing hide and seek, though. That's true. I there's just so many different reasons, uh, and I just can't get the story to line up in my head. But it feels like if they cared about human beings at all, that they would that they would have been known to us. So it makes sense to me that they're here for resources. But it, uh, but I don't understand why they're we, we're seeing them everywhere. Like if you if you want our resources, you think you try to be a little sketch about it. Hi, yeah, hi, find a cloud, right? Come out. You know, I just foggy I don't, day. I don't see why they're just hanging out. Like, why haven't they? I think part of the reason why we see so much more of it now is because everybody has a camera in their pocket now. Everybody has one of these. And that's true. Everything's can, on video now. Everything can fake stuff. So, like, how much of this stuff is real? How much of it's fake? You know, it used to be some local dude in Kentucky saw something, and it maybe had an article in the newspaper, maybe. No offense you if know? you're from Kentucky, by the way. She's just picking, well, no. she's picking the state. That's, that's, that's fine. I'm just saying somewhere random, you know? So, I, I don't know. I don't know that she it's necessarily more, or if it's just because we all are carrying around cameras in our pockets. Oh, that's a good point. All right, let's see what we'll see what uh, Commander Fravor has to say. There she goes. Thank you. We'll go to Mr. Richard himself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Garcia. I would like to have you on the my legislation to do just that on the on the reporting, um, and we'll get together on that. Maybe you can be my co-sponsor on that. That'd be really cool. Thank you for those great questions. Um, Mr. Graves, again, I'd like to know, um, how do you know that these were not our aircraft? Some of the behaviors that we saw in a working area, we would see these objects uh, being at 0.0, .0 Mach, that's zero airspeed, over certain pieces of the ground. So what that means, just like a river, if you throw a bobber in, it's going to float downstream. These objects were staying completely stationary in Category 4 hurricane winds. These same objects would then accelerate to supersonic speeds, 1.1, 1.2 Mach, uh, and they would do so in very erratic and, and quick behaviors that we don't, I don't have an explanation for. Okay. Have you spoken to um, commercial and military pilots um, that have seen these off of our East Coast? I have. Okay. Um, Mr. Fravor, I noticed that um, um, in the Tic Tac video, uh, it's tic tac like the candy, not tic tock like the uh, Chinese communist uh, app. app. That's correct. Yes, sir. I just want to make that because uh, my daughter uh, corrected me on that and called me a boomer and said, "Hey, boomer," and I said, "No, baby." It
They called me a boomer, baby. It's tic tac like the candy. You're going to have to just look it up. And, um, <laughs> but now I would also like to say today. What are you shaking your head at? Just. just you don't like lots, the way he talks? Lots of words. Oh, he, he asks good questions, but in between, he like says happy anniversary to his wife. He talks to his daughter. Did you remember to take the garbage out? He does a whole. He's all over the place, but he, he's entertaining. Today is a, is a day of many firsts. It's a um, miracle that we're having this this meeting, and it's also a miracle that my wife has put up with me for nine there, years. There he goes. Today there, is my anniversary. There so he goes. Tell my wife, happy anniversary, and that I love her very much. Um, as she likes to say, this nine years have been the best two years of her life. So <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. Mr. Favor. What, what astonished you the most about the, the flight capabilities of these Tic Tac, very briefly? Uh, the performance, absolute performance. It was- And, and you're, you're not aware of any other objects that anybody in the world has in this world that has those capabilities? No, I think it's far beyond actually our material science that we currently possess. Are you aware of any other reconnaissance platforms that have tracked or recorded the Tic Tac's maneuvers, maybe the NORAD system or any of the others? I am not. Okay. Mr. Grush, thank you for being here, brother. Thank you all very much. Um, have you faced any retaliation or reprisals for any of your testimony or anything on these lines? Yeah, uh, I have to be careful what I say in detail because there is an open uh, whistleblower reprisal investigation on my behalf, and I don't want to compromise that investigation by providing anything that may uh, help provide some information. But it was very brutal and uh, very unfortunate, some of the tactics they used to um, hurt me both professionally and, and personally, to be quite frank. Yeah. It's very unfortunate, as they say, when you're over the target, that's when they do the most by firing at you. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Best yes. Player. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Maybe in a, um, if we could get it, get in a um, confidential area skiff we could talk about that but unfortunately um we were denied access to the skiff and that's very unfortunate in this in this scenario so uh, um mr favor do you believe that you witnessed an additional object under the water in relation to your encounter i will say we did not see an object there was something there to cause the white water and when we turned around it was gone so there was something there that obviously moved Okay, it was it was not the same object though that you were you were looking at, correct? No, we actually joked that the Tic Tac was communicating with something when we came back, and because the white water disappeared. Uh, we were in in another instance. We're told about the capabilities of of a jamming during viewing of some when there were some people chasing some of these objects. Did you experience any of that jamming or interrupting your radar or weapon system? My crew that launched after we landed experienced significant jamming to the APG-73 radar, which was what we had on board, which is a mechanically scanned, very high-end uh, system prior to the APG-79. Jim, that's correct. Everything that he is whistleblowing, Grush we're talking about, is secondhand. He witnessed nothing. This is all stuff he's heard and read. And yes, it did pretty much everything you could do, range, velocity, aspect, and then it spit the lock and the targeting pod is passive. That's what we were able to get the video on. I'm about to run out of time, but um, are you aware of any of our enemies that have that capability? No. Okay. I would also like to note for the record that um, like George Knapp breaking area 51, he's the reason I knew about that. And the reason I know about the, the Tic Tacs is, uh, is Leslie Keene um, from New York Times article. And I would encourage everybody to read that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yield back to you for no time. WCF Invader thinks that was sleepy. Well, we're going to get you woken up with some Gino story hour in just a minute. Uh, read in the chat. If you want any more clips of that, let me know. That's that's the gist. Let me see. I, I took some quick notes here of all the takeaways. Uh, takeaways. 
The U.S. government conducted a multi-decade program which collected and attempted to reverse engineer craft UFOs, says David Grush, who heard this from others. Uh, Grush led analysis of unexplained anomalous phenomena, though didn't witness any, within a U.S. Department of Defense agency until 2023. Claimed he had been denied access to secret government UFO programs, says he had faced very brutal retaliation as a result of his allegations. He claimed he had knowledge of... Oh, my goodness. So unprofessional. Sorry. This isn't a live stream. This is a circus. Grush told lawmakers that non-human biologics had been recovered by the government, but he had never seen an alien body. Grush has also not seen the alleged alien craft himself. He says his claims are based on extensive interviews with high-level intelligence officials. And skeptics have noted that accusations that the government is hiding information on UFOs are nothing new. The Pentagon has denied Grush's claims of a cover-up. In a statement, the Defense Department spokesperson said investigators have not discovered any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently. How about that? They, we, looked, we, came, I, we looked everywhere. We don't see no craft. You, you believe that official report, Gino? Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm speechless as well. All right, once Gino gets his mic turned on, we can do some Gino story hour. I think we need some. <laughs> Sorry. I'm get, I, I, there's some, some show prep, right? I thought I saw a folder in there. Yeah. I think did Victoria actually make a folder of show prep? And it was like a. I don't know where Gino Ocean, where he go. Tell me something, I don't know where's Gino Ocean, where he go. Jet set and betting at the regular scenes worldwide travel feed with the cream. Jack Perry, he's the ball. Okay, yeah, here's some stuff. Here's some stuff. Hey, 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 Where's Gino? Yeah, that's super. Yeah, it's true. Cause that's a dude. He cares about He brings around them pops and this holds up. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a quick uh, one minute break. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a quick break. You, you want to read a couple of super chats? Well, all right, there he went. Okay. Well, nice. it'll also give me a chance to to get the to get the Gino sh images up on the screen without me just just looking at me doing this for a minute. Thirty-seven custom toys for thirty-seven dollars. Thank you. Can we get a bumper sticker that says oh, "I don't break for whistleblowers"? Poor John Mack. Love you guys. Wow. Funny, but wow. Okay. Thomas Caldwell, 74. Oh, he's, oh, we got that one. Oh, so he's back, but he's not. Uh, Drifter for $10. Thank you very much, Drifter. I love binge watching your videos. That's awesome. We love that you binge watch the videos. Shannon for 99. Look at the puppy. Look at the puppy. I gotta oh. know, is the, is the post-credit music that you dance to each episode from your old band? No. No, AJ wasn't in a band, but that would be good lore, though, wouldn't it? I mean, if that wasn't like an actual well-known song. That's um, With Music on Repeat by Victor Lundberg. Yes. Uh, by the way, AJ was in a band very early on oh. in uh, high school. Okay. I think I need to hear more about this story. There's got to be a, a, a tape somewhere uh, uh, lying around. Oh, that would be fantastic. I would love to see that. Beyond Strangers for $10. Thank you, AJ Hecklefish and Y Files team. Huge inspirations and appreciate all the hard work you put into this channel. Art. Thank you so much, Beyond Strangeness. We appreciate you. Um, let me just make sure I'm doing this well. I go so he doesn't reread. Justin Watkins for $9.99. UFO talk out of our government right now is just a distraction. The Western world is a decay. We lose our freedoms and quality of life. Mothership parked at the edge of our solar system. Why not? Yeah. I do think it's a distraction from something because it's not like this is new. It's not like this is new stuff. So why now? I don't know. Interesting. Something big's coming. Something big is coming. 
Jeremy Smith for 11. <laughs> won't. Won't you tip me? You know I don't believe you when you say you don't got money. Won't. Won't you tip me? You know I can't believe it when you say that I'm not funny. I write too many jokes just to amuse you folks. You better super chat me or I'll just keep singing. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Oh, 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 oh. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Oh, 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 oh. Well, Chris Springer's going through a lot. He says, thanks for the hard work, making me laugh and getting through these hard times. Hang in there, Chris. You know what you do when you're going through hell, right? You just keep going. This too shall pass, my friend. Is it, um, is it time? Dippity doppity dippity do. If you want to support Gino Story Hour, please go to cavemancoffeeco.com and use the promo code. All right, great plug. There he goes. Strong, solid plug. He's, the plugs are coming along. All right, so for tonight's story hour, uh, like I mentioned a little earlier, it's sort of a PG-13 story. So if there are kids in the room, you might not want them there. I, I don't know. Maybe you do. I, it's not too bad, but I'm just going to throw that that warning on be, uh, before we start. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, Antonio via Boas, which was one of the original abduction stories before the Betty and Barney Hill story. Uh, yeah, oh. He has that great mustache there going. Um, very handsome uh, farmer from uh, um, Sao Francisco de Salas, Brazil. Not San Francisco, Sao Francisco. Uh, and this story happened in October of 1957. So it's an old one, again, um, predating Benny and Barney, Barney Hill. Um, and, uh, he's, uh, he's a farmer, uh, with his family and him and his brother, uh, uh, are sh share room. And one night he wakes up because he sees a bright light coming through his window. He goes over to the window to see what the, the light is and it starts coming towards him. So he slams the shutters, uh, as quick as possible, wakes his brother up. His brother uh, gets up and says, you know, what's going on? I don't know how to do the, the uh, Portuguese accent from Brazil, but he says, no, well, please try. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> we'll be canceled. So um, so he's trying to figure out what's going on. And all of a sudden, the whole room lights up. So through the blinds and and um, almost through the ceiling tiles, they say, I don't know what kind of farmhouse this is. They could see the light, the bright light coming in. And then in a flash, it's gone. They don't know what to think of that. They didn't really see any craft or anything like that. Um, it's just something that 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 happened. Eight days later, sorry, that was five. So eight 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 days later, eight <laughs> days later, they're they're out on the farm and they're working the farm. Now uh, in October, since we're in the southern hemisphere, it's it's hot during October, so they're working at night to stay cool. So him and his brother are out on the farm, uh, you know, in the fields, working the tractors, and they see a red light that's um, out there, shot, um, like far up in the sky, but over the, one of the, their fields, um, you know, uh, down, down field from them. So Antonio has a, a lot of bravado, and he just starts going to chase these, these lights. And as he's chasing these lights, every time he gets a hundred yards or so to closer to the light, it disappears and then shows up at a different part of his field. Now he goes on to say he did this 20 times. It's like they're playing with him. He's running around his field, trying to catch this light and figure out what it is. He can only see a light up there. He feels like there's some kind of object, but all he can see is, is this, this red light. And then all of a sudden it's gone. Whew. He doesn't know if it just disappears or if it takes off while he's running and he missed it, but it's gone. Him and his brother don't know what to think. And, and that's the end of it for that night. Well, the next night, it's another really hot night in October. And Antonio's out there plowing the fields himself. I don't know if I'd go out there myself after the, those two uh, situations happen, but he's out there uh, plowing, plowing the fields. 
and he sees a, a pale red light far away and he could see that it's coming right at him almost like a shooting star so it's coming right at him and it comes to about 150 feet above his tractor and it lights up the the field like it's daytime with a, a red uh tint to it um he could see that um it's uh like a elongated um egg shaped uh type of vehicle it has three like prongs coming out the front of it and out of the back it has a, a, a long rectangular bridge looking um uh structure coming out of it so he's on his tractor and it's above him and it moves in front of him and then slowly descends to land now he's captivated in awe uh but as soon as he sees this thing landing he take, he jumped on his tractor and he takes off now i don't know how fast the tractor goes but he thinks he's out running this alien ship i don't i don't know why so as he on the tractor it's like he gets about 20 yards or so before the tractor just shuts down Zoop, all the electric shuts off so now he know, knows he's in trouble he hops off the tractor and starts running for the house still i don't know what the, how the house is going to protect him but he's running for the house and all of a sudden he's grabbed He's grabbed by a, a humanoid figure that's about five foot, like he said, comes up to his chin or chin or so. And the, um, the, it's wearing a silver outfit. It seems like they're all wearing silver overalls every, every time we tell these stories. So they got fashion sense, go ahead and slay. Um, so it's wearing silver overalls and a big helmet that he could see inside the helmet uh, two large blue eyes, and it has some tubes that are connecting the helmet to the the suit. Now, he's being attacked or grabbed by this one alien, so he does what anyone would do. He does the same thing Will Smith does. He punches it, punches it right in the face and tries to get away. Well, he only gets away for a second before three other aliens come out in the same type of suits, a little taller, and they all grab him and they lift him up. So, you know, they're now carrying him hand and legs in the air to the ship, you know, so he doesn't know what's going on and he's screaming, trying, trying to get away. And they're speaking in like um, what he described as grunts and whines, sort of like um, a dog would make, um, which is, you know, uh, 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 their way of communicating. Uh, he's not talking about telepathy or anything else that, that um, we usually hear. So he's doing his best to try and take take it all in. He sees that besides the silver suit, they got kind of like a, a broad belt on, but no clasp or anything. I don't know why you still need belts in, in space, but uh, got to keep the pants up. Um, and then also has yes, a, a silver uh, round disc on on their chest that's that's highly reflective or maybe giving off some kind of red light. So they drag him back to um, uh, they, they drag him back to the um, uh, to the um, to the spaceship, and now he's trying to figure you know look around what's on the spaceship, um, and he could see all the lights are like square lights, and everything looks like polished metal, and they lead him into this square room, and the doors close behind them, and when the doors close, you can't even see the um you can't even see the uh the doors like there's no there's no you know hinges there's no you, you can't even see that it, there, there was a door there so now he's just locked in he can't run out he doesn't you know he doesn't know know what to do um and these aliens now there's there's four of them in there start coming over to him and taking his clothes off now he thought he was being attacked, but they actually were very gentle with how they were taking his clothes off. So, so now they take take all his clothes off, and he's standing there. You know, can you can you say this part slowly and in in a, like a quieter voice? <laughs> so they're taking his clothes off, and as it, it, it gets a little bit more blue, as they take his clothes off, his clothes clothes are now off. He's standing there with these aliens. Another one comes in with this sponge looking uh thing 
and begins to give them a sponge bath of some translucent fluid that they're rubbing all over them. Now he described it. He said it wasn't sticky or oily or anything like that. And he assumed that's right. And he assumed that it was probably some kind of disinfectant or or something like that. But but he he, he doesn't he doesn't know. Um, Got to so, shower up first. Yeah, you know, it's important. You don't know what, what's going to gonna happen. You know something's going to happen. You get abducted. You know, things don't usually go, you know, it's not usually a great story what happens. So so now he's rubbed all over with all, all, all this translucent fluid, and they lead him into a, to the next room. And he's like, all right, what what is going on, on here? And two more aliens walk in with this big-looking tube thing. On one side of the tube is a little flask, and on the other side is a cup. So they walk over to him, and they stick this cup to his chin. And it pierces him, and he could see the flask is filling up with blood. And now they fill it up halfway, pull it out, and then another one comes over, sticks it on the other side of his chin, and fills it up all the way. So now they got all his blood. And uh, he, But he did say it didn't really hurt. It burned a little, but it didn't really hurt. So now... He's like, okay, I, what, what, what's going to happen next? And, he, you know, he, again, he's locked in these rooms. He knows he can't get out because the doors disappear after he's gone. So they bring him now into another room. I don't know how many rooms. A lot of rooms in, in this air, in this space, spaceship. So they bring him into this other room, and he's hanging out there for, for uh, you know, a few minutes. And all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, he smells something that he describes like a burning of uh, cloth burning, uh, or, or he said, smelled like paint and cloth burning. And he sees that the only thing in this room is some tubes at the top where this gas is coming out. So now he starts, he can't help it. He's breathing this in. He starts getting nauseous, and now he's throwing up in, uh, in, in the side of the room. So that goes on for a few minutes, and then the gas stops. And now he estimates... You know, uh, I guess you're up in a spaceship. Hard to estimate time. But he estimates about a half an hour goes by. And then the doors open again. And wouldn't you believe, walks in an, an alien. Well, he thinks it's an alien. But it looks like a human woman with no clothes on. Oh. So, now, so now he oh. describes her as the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. Long platinum blonde hair and really um, sparkling blue eyes. And as soon as he's seen her eyes, he realizes this is that first alien that grabbed me down there. So because she's the right height. Again, he sees the eyes. You know, you look into someone's eyes, you, you fall in love instantly. You never forget those eyes. So he realizes that this alien, you know, is uh, uh, is is in there. For some reason, he's trying to to figure out. And again, she can't speak. She's speaking in these these bark guttural noises and and whiny noises. But she kind of um, she walks over to him, and she has a beautiful hourglass figure. He says he says really uh, the only thing you could see is she has kind of a pointy chin. Um, that's and again, that's how he knew it was an alien. He also, she also said, again, try not to get too graphic, that she had red body hair. So um, so now the alien starts trying to seduce him. Now, how was, he try, how was the alien trying to seduce him? You think about some of the conventional ways, uh, things like that. Um, that's not how, how the alien tried to seduce him. She, what, can we go to what conventional ways? I don't know the conventional ways. I'm not going to get into that. But um, uh, the wow. non-conventional way is to lay him down and start rubbing her hair all over his face. So he says he's more aroused than he's ever been in his life. I'm trying to keep it PG-13. More aroused than he's ever been, been in his life. So he now is thinking, does that gas, was that some kind of aphrodisiac? Because... Uh, essentially, he doesn't exactly want to be up in a spaceship, you know, but he's now thrust into this situation. And um, and here he is, uh, you know, with an alien on top of him, seducing him. So uh, so some sexy space time ensues. That's the best way I'm going to put it there. Um, and 
as that happens, it goes on for about an hour. And I'm not going to, again, go how, does, how, do, how, does he ma- how does he manage that? Is there any tips and technique? Or? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, this. maybe maybe these are the, the reasons why. Number one, she couldn't speak. <laughs> All she could do is uh, make, make uh, those weird noises. But the She's second perfect. Thing, the second thing that happens is during the whole time, and he said, and, and this is sort of the weird, one of the weird parts of it, um, says, I was upset about it because she didn't kiss me. Instead of kissing, she kept nibbling on my chin. She's perfect. So I don't know what the nibbling on the chin is for, uh, but it's kind of a callback that they were sticking them in the chin with that cupping uh, thing and, you know, uh, and whatever. So so that goes on about an hour. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, the doors open again. And uh, uh, one of the other guys walks in. It's like, hey, what are you doing? You're coming in, breaking up my sexy space time here. And he comes in and kind of motions to the woman. And uh, the woman now, as she's walking out, she points at him and then points at her belly and then points up in the air. Again, she can't speak. So this is this is how they speak. They just keep pointing at him where to walk and where to go. And so now she, she points at him, points at his stomach, point, points up. And then she's got to get out of there, you know. So he, the other alien who just, you know, broke up all the, all the fun time, Leads him out of the back into the other room. So now he's going backwards through the rooms. They give him his clothes back. So he gets dressed and he feels like a comfort, like, like almost like they're just letting him hang out like uh, afterwards because they're not making him do anything or they're kind of walking him around here, even though they can't communicate. And he goes into one of the, one of the rooms where there's four of the aliens sitting around, around a, a table, one of the first rooms that he was in. And he notices on the table a little square box that he said he thought was a clock. It had a gla- like a translucent um, covering, and it had um, had markings where the three, the six, and the nine would be, and then four weird markings where the twelve would be, and it had a hand. The but three and the what? Where, where the three, six, nine were, there were there, there were markings, um, and then where the twelve was was four was was four symbols you had me at 369 so um so he sees this and you know sticky fingers he says no one's gonna believe me i'm gonna go i'm gonna take this along with me and he sticks it in his pocket he wait he he waited for the aliens to not be looking at him you know and he grabs this thing uh you know I mean, you know, if a girl comes over she walks out with your your favorite hoodie it happens you know so so he grabs this clock it's in his pocket and all of a sudden, one of the aliens realizes he's got the clock and he's not happy about it. So now things go from, hey, walk around this place, take a look, to you sit in this chair and shut up. They take take the clock back from him. He's stuck in the chair. And minutes later, he's they they get back to 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 his farm. They land, they put him onto the, the drawbridge thing, and they shove him on out. Now, before they leave. The guy again points to the ground, one of the aliens, and then points up. So he does again. He doesn't know that. Does that mean they're coming back for me, or 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 what, or or anything? So now he gets out and and take and they t- and they take off. And he says it's a, goes. It's a fantastic speed that it takes off at. As so now he goes back home and tells his family, "Hey, I couldn't plow the fields last night. I was busy. I had a date. So um, so couldn't but, plow the fields." Yeah, so he was doing some plowing, just not at the fields. So, um, so, hey, uh. so now um, months go uh, about you know two two months go by, and he's starting to get sick. So he um, he contacts a, a, a magazine called O Corizo Coriazo. I'm I know I'm killing killing the the pronunciation here which is like a ufo type of uh you know newspaper back then but we're you know we're, oh, this is uh you know the 1950s you know we're talking like the inquirer type of type of paper so he writes to the guy who's writing about ufos and says look this is what happened to me and i'm sick now because of this and they said guy says could i come interview you 
And he says, yeah, he says, do you mind if I bring a doctor? So he says, no, bring a doctor. So the, the, he comes and he gives the, the account of it. And that's how we have this account. But interesting enough, the doctor says, so what's been going on with him for the last few months is the next day after it happened, his eyes started burning. He started developing these lesions on his body. And every time he would bruise himself, it would turn into a deep, deep purple bruise. Um, that and does this story go into now alien STDs and <laughs> he has lesions all over his body. Oh, so, so are we uh, getting to, to the to the end yet? Are we at the denouement? We're, we're right at the end. So the the doctor says, you know, I couldn't I couldn't be conclusive about anything. What I could be conclusive, I think, about is he probably has radiation poisoning, and he definitely has scars on his chin. So, uh, so maybe, you know, maybe fake the scars or whatever. So, yeah, but what else is he going to tell the wife? So, well, he's not married at that point, which is interesting. So later on in life, uh, a few years later, he actually gets married and has four children. He becomes a lawyer, uh, well-respected in his town. And he never talks about it again, never talks about the story again, except for once where he tried, where about 10 years later, he tried to clear up all the stories about it that, we're, we're not telling it the correct way. I'm sure that this would be one of them. So, um, so, uh, so it's almost believable, but, um, that this guy did, would never try to make money off of it or anything. And to the day that he died in 1991, he, he says, his family says, he said that this a hundred percent happened. It was never a lie. So that is the abduction story of Antonio Via Bojas from Brazil. If you like that story, go to cavemancoffeeco.com. Go ahead and get yourself, use the promo code Y files and get yourself some job 51. It's the tastiest blend of coffee that's out there. Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet said betting that the regular scenes were. All right, there he goes. Gino story hour. Jack here, he's the bomb. Um and as always, this clip unfortunately will be posted on backstage channel tomorrow. <laughs> Was thinking about that. That was crazy. Maybe my my favorite Gino story hour to date. I think so. Uh, I, I mean, the so. comments the comments helped though. Gold. I mean, I, I, that was a really long story. There was so many details I left out of uh, how the the uh, UFO looked. I had to get to the important stuff. Yeah, right. you got, and you got to leave them wanting more. <laughs> A bunch of people asked if he got a case of alien crab cats. <laughs> Ooh, you don't want that. <laughs> Joe Snow says, now I need a cigarette. <laughs> that was a fun one. Just me enjoy enjoying that Gino Rotica. <laughs> you, you get some of that space, space boat smoke in you. You, you. you know, you never know what's going to happen. People want a sexy space time in Sue's t-shirt. Chance may be thinking that maybe Gino can bring this to Congress and we can move the conversation forward. Well, I know that, every, you know, everyone's listening to the story, but then you got to the, and then she walked in with the long hair and everyone's like, oh, well, oh. I got to say this Go is, on. The, this, this is uh, absolutely the first documented story about um, the aliens trying to breed with us i mean again usually it goes with with uh probes so this guy got lucky i mean in more than one way <laughs> this guy got really lucky yeah or you know maybe he didn't want to tell him tell the whole story about what happened you know some men don't want to you know yeah that's crazy that's so funny. all right good one um yeah, so that'll be posted on the backstage channel tomorrow. That's where we post all the clips. Sometimes I run late; it takes a few days, but eventually they do get up there. Fizz gig is enjoying this Wednesday. Uh, R. Rogers thinks it's a new merch idea to get some alien sexy time incense. <laughs> you could make it smell like Gino. What is G G and Gino's aroma is like head and shoulders shampoo mixed with weed mixed with feet. That's but it, but it balances nicely, it and cheddar cheese. But it balances it, the way it works together. It's it's peaty, it's earthy, it's masculine, and with a little bit of a tinge, a little twang. Terrible. 
Oh, now I'm terrible. I smell terrible. Everybody. Pile it on. How about you, Vic? Vic, you want to throw something on? <laughs> I'm standing up for you, Gino. I was saying he was being terrible. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Jen always does stand up for me. Hatch uh, just recently discovered the channel, so we owe him a big apology. But he's having a blast. <laughs> Thanks for the content. Cheers from Can uh, from, from from Canada. There, there's Hatch. Oh boy, it's live stream amateur hour again. Oh, St. Peter dropping 50 shekels. I get pretty freaky. He's a super freak. Like kind of fish you dream about. You got freaky dreams. I get pretty kinky. He's a super freak. But only if you pay me. Gotta pay the fish. I need a tip. I need a tip. I need a tip from you. And you. And you, human. You and you and you. Hit the, hit the, hit the. Hit the super chat, super chat. Hit the button now. Excellent episode, CJ. CJ killing it. Just keeps getting better all the time. I'm so darn old. I can say that I used Alta Vista to search the internet, and I remember those days, which only consisted of the Milnet. CJ, a CIA dude. No, sorry, but I am. He, 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 he. What are you sniggering about? How dare you? What are you cackling about? Nothing, CJ. CJ. Well, he, he, do you think he means me? Yes. Well, I'm glad he's there having a good time. I appreciate St. Peter, don't you? Yes, I do. Here's Jeffrey Smith for 1111 Make a Wish. The Zimbabwe story smells like a covert psychological experiment to test how the kids would remember things. <laughs> I like it. And there is animal, animal, cannibal for ten dollars. Just, I just love when Heckelfish says lizard people. I'm 38 years old. It makes me laugh every time. Coffee mug was worth it. Make sure you get your fist in there, animal cannibal. People asking for a, a, a t-shirt version of Gino's alien erotica story. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> John Haylock, 27.99. Ooh, thank you, human. You made my dorsal fin tingle. Okay, this whole show has gotten getting naughty now. Uh, orange glasses cover AJ reptile eyes. No. You know the way you just did that looks exactly like one one of the reptilian uh, uh, videos that are out there. There's a guy who's speaking in, a, in some professional manner, and the person behind him. Uh, I gotta find it now. Uh, is it has those exact eyes going on while this politician is speaking? Well, we gotta. We need. We need that clip in the in the. I know the one the you're talking about, Gino. She's like. She's sitting back there. She's mouthing every word that the politician is saying, and she's just well, like. <laughs> we'll drop a link. T-shirt yeah. should just be Jen with a speech bubble that says, "I don't kiss. I nibble." <laughs> I think I second is John Hobart. You know, I'm sick of the government puking at BS since I'm always on here complaining about it every episode. Yes, you are, John. What do we do next? I'm ready to follow you into battle, you handsome bastard. He Take can up be arms. on our team during battle. Yeah, he looks like he can handle himself. <laughs> Dave Hoffner, $5. Where is Jen tonight? She's why I watched the after show. Hi, Dave. Okay, I admit I'm a little lost here. Can someone help me out? Um, I feel like I'm in a dream where I'm the only sane person, or is it a nightmare? There's Paul for 20. Ooh, Mama Sita. Thanks for the tip, human. In Boy Scouts, our Scoutmaster was named Mel. So I cringe every time you talk about Mel's hole. Uh -huh. Sounds like you're, we, we dredged up a couple old scouting memories, huh? Yeah. Sorry about that. I've heard, I read those stories. <laughs> read those stories all right i'm I, i'm gonna take a 90 second break you want to read some super chats and then i'll come back and uh sure. i'll let you guys go and i will bang out the rest of them okay lord Vito for five dollars hello there hello hello hey I just to say, hey yo 
I just wanted to say thank you for what you do. I've literally watched every single episode. Keep pushing it. Keep it pushing, man. Thank you very much, Lorpedo. We appreciate you too. Uh, Corn Dog Wolfington <laughs> for nine ninety nine. Are there any topics you went into skeptical, but after doing a video came away less skeptical? Also, I knew people would accuse you of being CIA. That's awesome. Hollow Moon. Um, Hollow Moon. Yes, I was going to say that one. So, right. okay. also, I, I think uh, we won one over on um, Mothman a little bit. Maybe not the actual Mothman, but something happened there. Those are believable, credible witnesses. Yes. So both of those, but Hollow Moon for sure. If you haven't watched that one, uh, or you know, just go back and watch it again. That that's a fun one. And I think simulation theory as well uh, is one that um, we all sort of believe, or me and AJ sort of believe in. Jen doesn't, um, and I think that uh, won AJ over a little bit more when he did the more research on it. Yeah, one of my favorites. Stephen Abner for fifty dollars. Holy schmoly! I can't make half go fish sing because it's not in his contract. He doesn't have to do what I have to do. Oh, here we go. You stuff it in my fish bowl if you want conspiracy. We'll do anything you want, but you got to do something for me. We are the channel that can find whatever you may seek. But we need some money, human. We don't do for free. In the fish bowl. Put Shannon in the fish bowl. What if I said, please, please. <laughs> Human, thanks for all the cheese. Woo! Stephen, I, I actually wasn't squirting. I I took a minute to get a piece of gum in there. That's fine. Because I usually sneak my nicotine gum in during Gino's story hour, but he had me pulled in this time. Yes. It was a magnetic story. Yep. But I got some. I got some nicotine mint. By the way, it, nicotine gum. It's the drug that just knows. So if, if you're under 21, don't ever do it. Don't ever try it. But if you're over 21, definitely, definitely try not to <laughs> Well, I mean, there's four of us on here, and half of you I talked into nicotine gum. Yes, that yes. is true. That is true. Uh, Steven Abner, I absolutely love what you guys are doing. I hope you guys do a video on the structure supposedly on the moon. It's kind of fascinating. I remember seeing a documentary about them, but I would love to get your take on it. That's definitely coming, Steven. In fact, if that's in your guys, your notebooks, right? Because we do got to squeeze that in there. Yep. Awesome. This one's for Jen. <laughs> Eric Stiff for $10, but you didn't debunk the Van Allen belts. Just kidding, LOL. How did they get through the Van Allen belts? It's high energy particles, 10 million volts of, of energy, high radiation. Far apart, far apart really fast. <laughs> far apart really fast. There's your answer. <laughs> Not believing it. There you go. Martin S for 10 of those. My wife thinks I'm crazy. I bought three t-shirts so far. Love this channel. Well, Martin, thank you for buying the t-shirts. We appreciate you doing so. And, you know, everybody's a little crazy. That's all right. You're home. Rob Abels for $9.99. Hey, Rob. Oh, thank you for the tip. I'm saving up to build a bunker to protect me from the lizard people. They're coming to get you. Best channel on YouTube. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe top 10. Well, three top 20, or four top Y-Files team members agree. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy for four ninety nine. First time super chatting. Well, thank you. Great channel. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Open lines. Found... Go ahead. Great channel. Found no, you go. <laughs> you do it now. I'm sorry. Funny guy, 499, first time super chatting, first time a long time listener. Great channel. You 
you found you from the pyramid videos when you had 800,000 subs. I'm with you on the UFO hearings. Way too convenient. 800,000 subs was not that long ago. <laughs> no. It's not, you know, that was that wasn't that long ago. It's it's been weird. Um, there's Brian Sincerbo. 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 Shit, baby. 2222. Would love to hear your version of the Honey Valley, Valley of the Headless Men sometime. By the way, uh, for Operation Mincemeat, the Y Files is greater than Mr. Ball. And I love me some Mr. Ball. That was weird. We, we released the episodes like a, a day or two apart. Mars was mm -hmm. first, but a day or two apart. Yes. There's Big Paul, the whale, the golden child, 50 bucks. They got me in collections and garnishing my wages too. Got guppy support payments, alimony up the wazoo. They repoed my car. I'm living in a jar like a bum. <laughs> I know that you got money, so why the hell don't you give me some? Mm -hmm. Tip the fish today. Please tip the fish today. Paul says, I do not like Mr. Ballin at all. I don't care if other fans like him to each their own, but AJ, do not aspire to him. I personally can't stand him. No, I'm not really aspiring to anybody, Paul. This is all just, we're just kind of just riding it out. You know, uh, sooner or later, the good times are over. So we're just going to, we're going to ride it out. I'm afraid the good times are over. You, you, did you hear Homestar Runner's voice in your head when I said that? I, I heard it as soon as it was coming out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, AOC's thick Latino booty. I thought she had a Latina booty. Latina. A what are you laughing at? That's his, that's his username. That's fine. That's fine. We still have free speech in this country, allegedly. At some point, of we did. We do. Well, can you read his name? AOC's thick Latino booty. Ay, Dios mío, my caramba. AJ, there's a story about two dozen uh, deputy sheriffs seeing corrupt in 1977 in Florida, Mississippi. That is one of the most amazing experiences I've ever heard of. It's not well known. I think it would make a great episode. Well, I'm going to write that one down. Uh, AOC's thick uh, Latino booty. Uh, it's 1977. Or Mississippi UFO. Madison County UFO sightings. Flora UFO sightings remain unexplained. All right, we've got some stuff there. AOC's thick Latino booty. Your CGM Powers, $5. You're not CIA. Tell the truth. You're MI5. Uh, DT 1876 for $10. Would you ever do an episode about the Travis Walton UFO abduction, or do you already have a gut feeling about that one? I'm not in love with that one, DT, but I'll cover it if you want, if you want to hear it. You know, I wasn't a Gino's Gino saying who's got two thumbs and wants to hear that story. Yeah, if you want to hear it, I don't mind doing it. There is Terra Tower five dollars every after the week I've had, no matter how rough, you always put a smile on my face. This one goes out to you. Long distance dedication. You guys deserve every super chat you get. Well, thanks, Tara. I hope you're having a better night. Now that the madhouse is open. But speaking of thick Italian, uh, thick uh, Latino booties. Moolala. Fish really need some money. I need to buy some stuff. Fish really need some money. YouTube don't pay enough. Fish really need some money. So click the super chat. Like that, that, that. <laughs> so, uh, thick booty's back um, with more requests in the floor of Mississippi. I, I told you I looked. I looked it up, and there's good stuff in here. Floor of Mississippi is a town with a terribly creepy past. 
alien abduction encounter, Florida UFO, remains unexplained. Yeah, oh, we're all about it. You guys wrote that one down? We're all over it. Thanks, Booty. Jennifer Wilson's back. Ooh, five more dollars, and you get a private dance. Ooh, finally able to super chat. It's hard to stay awake for After Files. You just look at Victoria during the show, and you know you're right. Love tonight's episode. So grateful to my bestie who introduced me to Y Files. All right, thank you, bestie. What a good bestie. There's Electric Sheeple for $20. So happy to stumble onto this channel three weeks ago. Welcome to the Madhouse, most bingeable show I found in years. Also, any advice on how to tell my girlfriend that I'm actually a lizard people? Don't worry, I've gone straight. I'm done with the NWO life. <laughs> All about that lizard life. No, you can't. Don't tell your girlfriend anything. Now is the best time to start creating sort of a wall of secrecy in your relationship. That way, it's good to learn these skills now as a young one. That way, when you're finally married, keeping secrets will be like second nature. As Tronics for $20, this one for the expert on the topic, Jen. How do the astronauts make it through the Van Allen radiation belts? Love you, show guys. Thank you for all the hard work that goes into it. And there you go. There's your answer. Zane K for $10. I sympathize with distrust of government. I don't get a solid sense from Grush, but it's starting to believe it. Maybe just a schism within the intelligence community. We can't, we'll, we'll, we can talk more at our next CIA meeting. Is that, <laughs> that's what, that's what CIA assets do. We have a little meetups. We meet at a Starbucks and we talk about our trade craft. Right, we better get Applebee's going here. Applebee's. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't just get a Caesar salad and be done with it. Yeah, that's what the cat was standing on the chair for because I was eating the salad and he was like trying to dig in the bowl. I'm a fish and I'm a star, so put more dough in my jar. The type of vodka that I need is Belvedere. Hey, AJ, none of you expected to I be- I need oh. to buy a tinfoil hat, so please click the super chat. We all know the government is listening. None of us expected you to be the UFO guy, but we assumed you were becoming the UFO guy. There's a huge difference between you ta taking your time to become an expert one at a time and making one episode a week and forgetting the details. What do you think about that, Jenny? Well, I mean, you don't forget the details. It's not like you're cramming for a test and then you just let it go after it leaves. No, but it, I mean, I don't retain as much as I would like to. That's crazy what? because you retain more than anyone I could ever imagine. Uh, oh. Like, especially when I bring something, I go, you remember that guy that said that you, and you know, remember the guy's name so obscure. Uh, I really don't know how you remember all this uh, stuff. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fading. But um, I'm I'm an expert on the topics for about three days, and then the and then then the lack of sleep and the overtired sets in and it's, it's out. It turns to mush. Keith Pierce says, "You think you could do a podcast on the Clawfoot people from New York?" Oh, <laughs> this live stream is a mess. You should be ashamed of yourself. Shame, shame, shame on you. I never heard of the Clawfoot people. From New York oh, State. Have you heard of those, Gino? I haven't. I'm Googling them right now to try and find an image. We are frantically Googling the Clawfoot people of New York State. I found a lot of nice tubs. <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's, I'm getting tubs as well. <laughs> I'll look into it. All right. Victoria's going to look into it. 
homework. There's Jacob Manure. Uh, mentor, Jacob Mentor. Mentor, shout out to my two Frenchies, Archie and Leo, and my fiance, Jasmine. Fear the Crab Cat. I like the name Jasmine. Yeah, that's a good name. Very exotic. It's exotic, yes? Yes. Yes. Archie and Leo sound, and they're Frenchies. What does that mean? Is, are, they in, are they in like, is this like a no. thruple? No, 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 no. Is this Those a polyamorous French, situation? French bulldogs. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Okay. I thought it was polyamory. It's because of Gino's story. He's got me all worked up. He should do couples therapy. <laughs> couple of cryptids, couple of aliens. Oh, my God. The Bippo 5. Hey, all these topics are wonderful. Keep doing what you do. And I appreciate that, Bippo 5. I'm glad you're out there. Couldn't do this without you. Here's all right, hundred dollars. Hookah chaka hookah 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 chaka hookah hookah. I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. Human, you just don't realize what your tips do to me. When you tip me. I can pay my bills and you make me tingle in my gills. Oh, your tips are amazing. Ba, 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 ba. And I think it's crazy ba, 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 ba. that you send cash to me. <laughs> hey, it's Ray. So in Bellflower, California, I've seen huge orbs. Oh, right above tree level. I thought he was talking about his landlady. I've seen them periodically since 2010, usually around this time of year. They glow this orange-amber look to them like mini suns. We'd love to talk more about it. I spent a lot of time in Bellflower. I don't remember seeing seeing that kind of stuff. Uh, did have some good barbecue down there. What was the name of that barbecue place down in Bellflower? It was so good. Ray's? I think it was Ray's. Well, I'll ask maybe, Gino. He's, he's got maybe, the memory. Uh, maybe this Ray <laughs> owns it. I mean, what good barbecue place isn't called Ray's? Uh, right. It's it's a safe bet. There's your Robbie. Oh, what kind of avatar is that? Is that an arachnid? Uh, I don't like. Were you ever an actress? Like. Me? No. This is the only way I could have, have this heard. The grid UAPs from the Philippines was definitely a reflection. Okay, if you watch the clip, you will notice the UAP move with the camera. <laughs> Conduit closing. Conduit closing. That's how they. That's how the aliens ended their transmission in the with the crop circles. With the Conduit closing. So that's nicely done, Robbie W. Good callback. Homebrew Buzz nine ninety nine. This human right here. This human gets it. Topic idea: mind versus biology. I read an article not long ago about a man with multiple personality disorder who was an insulin dependent. Diabetic in one personality and perfectly healthy in others. Oh, I love that idea, Homebrew no. Buzz. No. No? That can't happen. Oh, I thought you meant don't do the topic. No, I like I like hey, topics topic. like that. That'd be cool. I've got a, a like four or five episode ideas I just haven't pursued because everyone likes aliens and UFOs and Big Feet. But, it, but they're all about, you know, weird brain stuff, like hyperthymesia, people who remember absolutely everything. Big feet. Um, savants. What? Well, I guess that's the plural of Bigfoot. The big feet, right? Sure. There's Sir Lancer 23 loves the Wi-Fi. This is the first time catching in the live show. I laugh every time you say Mel's hole as that is my ex-wife's name. <laughs> Everybody wants to get in Mel's hole over there, Sir Lancer. Maybe that's why she's an ex, huh? Wait, somebody <laughs> just told us. Oh, 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 my spleen. Oh, you're going to rupture my spleen. Somebody what just said. It? Barbecue and Bellflower, he thinks we're thinking of Johnny Rebs, which I think he's right. We are. Johnny Rebs is correct. But it's closed now. Well, 
Timothy Till is here. Keep up the content and the brave positions. I really look forward to every Thursday. Ooh, I hope my position wasn't brave. I don't want to be the, the brave position guy. Was I to have a brave position? I'm just trying to be honest. There's the cheapest big spender that I know. Oh, those are the doctors, yeah? Yes. Need to hear Milton William Bill Cooper's interview. Interesting. My brother shared the arcade episode with me, and now I am hooked. It's talking about the Polybius episode. That's one of my favorites. Even my faithful Christian mom enjoys your shows. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Hi, Mom. Polybius is that – that's the video game that – that the government installed in, in the Pacific Northwest. And when you played it, it was mind control and they were murder. The kids were murdering people and then they were having heart attacks. This is a true story. Ricky T 999 uncle had top secret clearance as a teenager growing up with while X files was aired. I bugged him about UFOs relentlessly after years of saying nothing. He said, keep an open mind. I was shook. Yep. Ricky didn't give his wife a black eye in that picture, did he? <laughs> you can't put your hands on a woman like that. There's Mark M, $20. Do yeah, baby, slip that in my G-string. Says the videos are great. I get to blow my coworkers every day after watching a new video. No, no, that's not what, what it says. Reread. Blow the minds, blow the minds. I'm sorry. Yes. Blow the minds of my coworkers, Mark, Mark M. Greg Landry's for 10 Canadian. How dare you? What a great show. More alien stuff, please. Love Hecklefish. All right. Whoa, this is one smart human. Are you sure you're not pot goldfish? How dare Jenny, can you do a how dare you in how Greta's How dare voice? you? <laughs> Victoria, do you do a Greta impression? No. It just, just shakes her head. No. Is Remy de Trow? Trow to trow. My buddy and I absolutely love the shows, man. Hecklefish is the best. Well, I appreciate the support, man. This human knows what's up. And I appreciate everyone super chatting tonight. It really helps keep the channel going. Uh, we can also support the channel with some merch. This is this is from this this week. Oh, there's a nice close up. There's the oh, there's a close up of it. it. There's Gendigo hands claim another victim. Look there, they are. Look at those. Look at those spindly, those are creepy. Put those away. Remember, it looks like the Crypt Keeper when she does that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, exclusive aliens attack innocent African school children. Anunnaki are real. Page 15. Blueprints to build forbidden time traveling mirror inside. Yes. Someone, on, someone on Twitter posted a picture of a of a, a bathroom somewhere that was built in that sh in the shape of the closer red mirror. You saw that Victoria on, on your, on your tweets, your Twitter. I, yep. So guys, I want to hear in the chat what you think about this. We've thought about doing like once a quarter doing like an actual weekly world news or geekly world news paper that what? we like send out to Patreons that is just full of like ridiculous made up stories that Who's going to write based, that? I don't know. We'll get somebody to write it. They're kind of based on like <laughs> uh, the stories, the episodes we've done. What do you guys think? Say no. No, 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 Bonds <laughs> Beastie. They'll make me write it. <laughs> Faith K, how dare you? <laughs> do eat. Volcanics Worth. Fizz Gig says yes. Of course, Fizz Gig wants it. Mm -hmm. There's Thug Jeff wants it. Halgari like the onion? Yeah. It's kind of like like the onion, the alien. You know, Jessica Sanchez has my back. Thank you, Jen. Well, AJ is busy. Well, he doesn't have to write it. Robo, Robo TXL. AJ grows weed and Gino smokes it before story time with Heckle like Shaggy and Scoop. And Robo, it's funny, but he doesn't know how close he is to the truth right <laughs> there. <laughs> no close to the truth. Chance Baby's back. Show segments for the future. Gino Story Hour. Pleasant chat with Victoria and painting with Jen. I love all three. Pleasant chat. Victoria, can you prepare a 10-minute chat segment for next week? 
Sure. Be careful what you agree to because he'll be like, That's hey, what, what are you talking about on your chat session? Uh, you know, there's new Patreon exclusive shirts. <laughs> Look over there. <laughs> but you need the password, right? Yes, you should know it. See the second one? So oh, I love this one. This is, well, let me zoom. Grand Order of the Benevolent Hecklefish with the Eye of Horus with Timeo Cancri Catus. That's Latin, y'all. Mm -hmm. I think we did it on a cup, too, mug. Yeah. I think Our so, too. That would be a great cat. mug. What's it say again? It's for it, Tomeo cancricatus means like what I fear the crab cat. Fear it does indeed. It does indeed. Jen, the official Latin translator for the show. <laughs> so these are Patreon exclusive. So so when the uh, when the when the t-shirts from the episodes drop off the the store, that's where they go, right? They they get to the Patreon page. Yeah. So you can get some some of uh. SMK's great art. Is this one of his? Yeah, this is. Exclusives at the top. There's also the coffee shirt, uh, Java 51. See it right by the mug. Keep going. Nope, up top. There you go. Oh, this is a double sided shirt. That sounds expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. We, we put all the shirts down. Thank you. All right, so that's a great way to support the channel if you want stuff. Uh, the best way to support is through Patreon. And then jump on Discord. Discord's free, by the way, if you just want to check it out. Let me give you a link. And I'm on Discord all the time. So you can listen uh, or tell stories and, um, you know, you come up with a good one. It'll show up on Genius Story Hour. <laughs> is that where this crazy sex story came from? Someone in Discord? Uh, no, not not this time. Um, uh, this one was just just searching around. Um, but uh, this was one that I knew would sort of be a hit. Your search history is very different than mine. Uh, it ab absolutely is. My algorithm is really strange. Really strange. <laughs> There's Lucky Brownie. Loves the channel. All the hard work the team puts in. It's greatly visible. Hola. De Nicaragua. Well, gracias, amigo. We appreciate the support. Is that Kenneth, where nicotine comes from? Is that where who comes from? Nicotine. Is that where you get your nicotine gum from? <laughs> you can tell we're getting into hour three of the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should change it to Gino's comedy hour and just have him do, have him write jokes all week. And watch the fans go down and down and down. <laughs> Kenneth Rathburn Jr. is here. Uh, a confirmed conspiracy. Order 66. We need an episode. I thought that, I thought that was when they killed all the Jedi. <laughs> well, finally, my browser is bringing up the tragic tale of the clawfoot people of Zor Valley. Oh, it looks pretty good, actually. Okay, it's on the list. All right. <laughs> Did you hear a goose honk that at me? That wasn't that my ringtone for you for years? Yes, when I would call, his phone would honk like a goose. And just the voicemail for me, when I would call, it'd be like, are you calling me? No, no. And then it would go. <laughs> but that's what, cause that's what you're, you sound like. Hey, Hey, no. <laughs> she does. She sounds like a screeching goose at other Thank times you. as well. That's John Michael, it. they see her sway and they hate in. I'm talking about my camel Gertie. Talk about my, my camel, camel Gertie. Talk about my camel Gertie. Camel Gertie. I think we may have to we may have to drop that that track this week. There's 
Cat gamage, gamage, cat gam gamage, cat, cat. There's cat twenty dollars. Thank you, human. Maybe now we can get some indoor plumbing for this bowl. Ugh, it smells like a dumpster full of used baby diapers in here. Okay, okay. Well, cat, enjoy the episode and says hi to the team. That's very nice. Thanks for your support, Kat. Thanks to everyone for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. There's Logan Miller from 1999. Of course, slipped and said 2025 because he's still employed in intelligence. I caught the same thing, Logan, and he backed it up. He, he backtracked, but I caught the same thing. Um, once you're employed in Intel, you're always employed. You're never out. Never, never out. Con Kane, Kane J. Uh, for 10 New Zealand, there are many other Pentagon insiders and whistleblowers corroborating this. Talk to Ross Colthart. So if a PSYOP that involve a lot of people and fake information, let. What? Oh, I think Victoria did that. Oh, sorry. I haven't done that in a long time. I can tell because we were all like this and Victoria was like. <laughs> so if a PSYOP involve a lot of fake information that docks to Congress, what's coming? I don't know, Kane. I have an open mind. I want to believe. I just don't, I don't trust. And would they supply fake documents to Congress? Absolutely. A hundred percent. They would a hundred percent. I mean, Homeland security has been providing fake documents to Congress for two and a half years. Michael Saggio for $20. I watch a lot of vids on UAPs, which only show these orbs never craft. I'm certain these orbs are the energy source for our uh, ARVs as uh, alien reproduction vehicles as humans can't replicate the non-human craft due to not having proper material. Element 115, what say you? I think you're onto something, Michael. I think you're right about a lot of the stuff you said there. Oh, Encrypted 3D says, no reply to my super chat, WTF. I'm sorry, in, in, Encrypt 3D. We try to get to everybody if we can, but sometimes the show runs a little long. But he got a reply to that. Yo, know, well, that's why I said it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. John McGuire is asking, why is Super Chat limited to $500? You I don't too. know why, John, but I like your style. Yeah. I think I you like can send two. <laughs> I know. I'm just trying to come up with. We have to get we have to get Jen a shirt that isn't ripped. James what? Tiberius Kirk is there for ten Australian. Mister Spock was going to testify today, but he's changing the Spock plugs on the Enterprise. <laughs> Nicely done. There's Captain Kirk. There he goes, and that's and that's the that's the Kirk headshot. Look look at the smolder. I don't know. He looks like he just smelled a fart. <laughs> Dr. Taylor for $20. Swim will autograph pictures of hecklefish. Hit your store. Great job again. Those are coming. Uh, uh, the, the biggest hurdle to those is we just have to get all in the same building. Once we are, we're going to get um, autographed hecklefish 8 by 10s out. I don't think I'd put them in the store, Dr. T. I think I'll just send them out for free would be my way I would do it. Like everyone, everyone who's, who mails stuff in the mail to us deserves something like that in return. And if you have been sending stuff in, I appreciate it. We get all that stuff. Darren Bennett, five dollars. Love from Cebu, Philippines. We love all the work you do. Thank you, Wild Files crew, and especially Gino for Gino Rodica. Reed James Davison says, What's the matter with Jen's shirt? My wife does that all the time. See? I do it. I think they should get a divorce. <laughs> Legion of Comics for $5. Great show tonight. I'm on vacation with my family. I showed my mom. Now she's totally in for more. Down the rabbit hole we go. We are Legion. All right. Hail Legion of Comics. Hail. Thank you for the support, Legion. Alien of the Apocalypse 2. I worked in Intel long ago. Trust me when I say, AJ, everything is a PSYOP. Okay. They want it to be transparent. There wouldn't be a need for a skiff during this. Here, here. Here, here. Doc Griffin. Is that is that a Griffin wearing like Beats by Dre? Yep. I have a really brilliant, relevant, and witty comment, but unfortunately, I can't discuss that information in a public setting. <laughs> well done, Doc. Well done. Lee Painter's there for $10. Might this hearing be a prelude to the Pentagon trying to explain the missing trillions from the military audits? It would not be. It would not be a prelude to that at all. 
but I like the way you think. Hector Rosa, Mrs. Space Panda. Aww. There's Young Nuisance. Who kind of looks like a Young Nuisance in the in the in the pick, right? Yeah. Like he doesn't give up. He doesn't care. Shout out to all the weirdos, oddballs, geeks, and nerds. Hecklefish High represent. He's talking about us. Appreciate the support, nuisance. Jeffrey Johnson's there for ten dollars. Great channel, love it. Love the beard, strong beard, square beard. Zephyrus flight, Zephyr Zephyrus flight. The prime directive: aliens won't engage first contact with us until we develop warp technology. Could be right. Well, he's talking about when Zephyr and Cochran invented warp drive, and they took it out on the test flight, and then the Vulcans saw the warp signature. And then they came back. That's for Jennifer. Just explaining to her. Got to catch her up on her Cochrane history. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? There's Nick Horton for 10 Australian. Hey, love today's video. The exact same thing happened at Westall Secondary College in Melbourne, Australia. James Fox has plenty of footage on it. I know he does. I use some of it. I was in the phenomenon or one of the ones prior. Yeah, Nick Horton, check out the last chapter of the video. I covered the West Hall incident. It's a great one. Ton of witnesses. Um, and cover-up and conspiracy and government threatening people. It's, it has all of it. I think we may do a full episode on that at some point. There's James Eaton for nine ninety nine. What if the resource we provide is entertainment? <laughs> well, and aliens ain't watching this show. Look how much humanity spends on it. Maybe... Uh, E.T. Corporation bought the rights to Earth, and that's why we were left unharmed or some galactic law. Could be. Could be that they just, you know, they optioned to Earth, and then we're just locked into that until the option expires. James Eaton sounds like an entertainment lawyer out there. Christopher Jeremiah, thank you for the $20. Cha ching I appreciate the tip, human. Time to hit the tables, baby. Uh, Chris was, was driving CH-47s. In 2010 in Iraq, and approximately 50 others watched an orb travel near the city of Talafar by a drone. Anyone who showed interest was mocked because their senior officers downplayed it. That, I hate to hear that, Chris, but I do believe it. I do believe it. So many stories came out of there. And unfortunately, the one I hear all the time is the one I don't believe, which is the Kandahar, the, the Kandahar giant. I don't believe that one, but so many other good stories have been covered up. Adam Shore for $10. Maybe this whole thing is an office prank gone wrong. They were like, tell Grush he shaves his eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could, you know, I could see it. I could see it. Justin Washburn is there for 10 Canadian Grays. Our subterranean descendants coming back to when they estimate things went south. Abducting inconsequentials to try to figure out where we went wrong and fix it without harming the timeline. You should write sci-fi. <laughs> Justin, that's a great, that's a great premise right there. I would read that book. Adnan Sheikh is there for 1999. I love both the concept behind uh, behind and the show. What is he? What he likes the my behind? Yes. And so happy show. I came across you guys a while ago and binge watched all your videos in no time. This might be random, but any chance of doing a video on a black magic voodoo and or jins? Could be. Could be a. Could be a show. I don't know if black magic. I would do a whole one, maybe voodoo, hoodoo, and something Jean, like that. The Jin were part of our shadow people episode as well. Yes, they were, and they, I mentioned them in another one also, but I forget what it was. The memory fails me. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta get the, the Grubhub map over there. Uh oh, Kesh is already out. Avatar guy says AJ does have a cute butt. I concur. W38 and W3387R45H. Can we please uh, got an episode about the poisoning of our water and food supply by the government and the corpos? Also one of the greatest channels ever on YouTube. Thanks for everything. Keep on keeping on. Um, no, we can't do that episode, not on YouTube. But uh, if, we can, if we can free up some time, which we're working on, we'll do that on another platform. All right, Kesh is almost here. Going to have to plow through these. I see what you did there. 
50 bucks? What the fish needs now? A tips, sweet tips. They're the only thing to bring a smile to my little lips. Or buy a shirt, a mug, or a hat. If it's easier, just click the super chat. <laughs> Is this mic still on? It looks like it's on. Well, I hit something when I got up, and I heard my computer go do do do. The sound it makes when something's unplugged. It's like, uh, what did I? What did I do? <laughs> Does this work? Looks good. That that that's there. Can someone open Google Maps, please? I got lost and ended up in Wacky Town. <laughs> Hector says, "How come no one's talking about the conspiracy of Space Panda? What happened to him? Lizard people? Whistleblower?" That could be a files episode. I'm from the greatest city in the world, Chicago. I love Chicago. Loved. Love Chicago. We don't talk about Space Panda. <laughs> Rick, love it. $49.99. Ooh, I finally love hearing the phrase, just the tip. <laughs> just for you, Mrs. Y files. That's just for you. Well, thank you, Rick. It's very oh, nice. Stop, stop flirting. John Mangino for 1999. Could you um, maybe just have the woman on screen during the story? Just uh, just asking for a friend. <laughs> what? Okay, thank you. Nick Horton for fifty dollars. Whatever those are, AJ and team. This wait, episode wait, is that your broadcast voice. <laughs> I was. Being I you. love it. I oh, love it. Ba -ba 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 All right. Let's hear what he got. This episode hit close to home. Same thing happened at West Hall High, Melbourne, I mean, Australia. You're, you, you're about to have a breast just fly out. We did the sex story earlier, and now you're going to flash the, flash the chat? There's no breasts flying out. What? It's about to emerge. No, it's not. You better, you better check check your situation there. That's better. Go find yourself a frock. <laughs> 100 to 150 witnesses, including science teacher, so teachers who saw were all threatened to secrecy. James Fox included in Phenomenon from Australia. Yep, and we will probably cover it, Nick. That's a great story. Good one. Where are we at? Oh, there's Dankanon. Yes, my dressing room is getting an upgrade. I'm thinking I need a leather sofa, silk pillows, and a living masseuse. Um, we'll have Victoria handle that. Great episode. Do you think content creators who cover topics like this inadvertently hold a kind of responsibility when noticing they're able to change the minds of larger groups of people, or is it just entertainment? For this channel, it's just entertainment, Dankanon. But I try to be very honest about that. I'm not trying to persuade anyone. And that's why when I do a story, I try to cover all the angles and let you make the decision. Um, a lot of channels that do this either do, here's the, here's the wacky story and it's 100% true. I know because I watch those channels. And then the other one is, here's the wacky story and you're stupid for believing it. Simon Whistler, you know, those types of channels. So the Wi Files tries to be in the middle. Like, here's the fun story. Here's as much information as I could find on it. Here's the information I found that can maybe debunk it. But hopefully, we debunk most of it, and then whatever's left is the truth. But uh, responsibility? No, I'm just an entertainer. There's Nor Saeed for $5. I think they got some of their junk wrong acting like the real deal, Common Enemy 369, though I, though I am the only smart person now I know. We are five heart Y files. Yikes. Sounds like someone combs their hair with a brick. I I appreciate I appreciate the <laughs> I appreciate the, the good comment, Norseed. I appreciate the support. That was funny. Three six nine to you as well, my friend. Frank Zener, nineteen ninety nine. Hey, I posted a guitar video on Instagram with my hecklefish shirt on. Slash favorited and liked my video. I think he's a fan of the show. Well, Frank, send over the link. 
send up a link. We'll put that up. Matt Strandquist, twenty dollars. Lizard people, spelled correctly. Mm-hmm. Nicely done. Hey, would you blow me? <laughs> Whoops. Sounds like old boy got a case of the space herp. Yup. All right, Jen, you may have to get ready to take over here because Kesha is going to be here soon. You know how she is. I Becky have. Ward, nine nine nine. Have you seen the videos going around about all the government officials around the world that have a person in the behind them mouthing every word like they're the puppeteer of these people? It's super creepy. I have seen some of those. I'm. I'd like to see more. There's Viceroy, Arizona, thirty three, thirty three. Excellent content. Top team. Love the shows. Appreciate that, Viceroy. All right, Victoria will take over from here. <laughs> he sold the kids. The kids' yeah. stories of UFO could be kids are always imagining worlds. Adults lose that ability. Clustered consciousness state may trigger an attraction. I think that's probably very valid. And the guy coming months after, suspect. Jen, you can take over. <laughs> Johnny Bosch, $5. Heck of a strikes me as a smoker. What's his brand, Camels? <laughs> that's cute. I see what you did there. Very cute, very cute. Frank mixed with oh, I, I can't even. Isn't it amazing what passes for a live stream these days? Boy, oh boy. I used to work for the government too. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thanks. All right. We're going to keep up the good work. There's D Etherton, $5 on a different, different, yet. So, oh, my. Goodness. This live stream is so disappointing. Just so, 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 so disappointing. Cat. Cat. I think a good story to tackle would be genetic memory and or memories from donors of organs into transplant recipients. Yes, that's a great topic, D. It's got just enough creepy, but not enough to be uh, to to get the algorithm angry. Genetic memory, and memories from donors of organs into transplant recipients. Someone jot that? Poor Favor. There's Melanie Colingridge. She said she sounds like she's been granted peerage, doesn't she? Does this sound like La- Lady Melanie of Coolingridge? Yes. Huh? Thank you, Mitch McConnell. You guys are the best YouTube channel. You seriously was barley one mil when I started watching. Now it's reaching for three mil, and all y'all seriously deserve it. Three out of four subscribers would recommend, LOL. Oh, barely, not barley. You weren't talking about a cereal crop. Three out of four subscribers would recommend. Okay, just a second. And there's Paul is back for $10 Applebee's. This really does feel like the good old days, doesn't it? I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, she saw it coming. I saw in her eyes. She was like, he's going to do it again, but he won't do it a third time. (laughs) Okay, Okay, go ahead. Comedy comes in threes. It comes in threes. I was just going to tell everybody, I didn't get in trouble. He didn't bully me into changing my shirt. I wanted to see if he noticed, and he didn't even notice. So that was what was funny. I... I'm, I'm just, I didn't notice because I'm so used to your obedience that it just fades in. <laughs> How dare you cackle? What's the matter? How dare you? <laughs> you embarrassed me in front of these people. Oh, oh was that good oh, for you? Funny. That was that's a good funny. time for you. Yeah, it was good. Scott McDonald's there, 15 Canadian. I'm trying to teach the folks here how to keep their women in line. <laughs> you're making me shrivel <laughs> when are you going to do a show about the COVID pandemic you know the truth too soon i can't cover covid scott i can't i can't report on all the on all the lies that i never fell for you're 
Jurman Gonder for ten dollars. Do you remember the movie Flight of the Navigator? Sure. Good one. Sure I do. Gina will give you the quick plot summary. Well, uh, a kid uh, falls down a ravine uh, while he's going looking. Nicely done. There's Altev Baca. Have you heard about the Finder's Cult? Would make for a good video. Maybe a bit graphic, though. Love the vibe of these live streams. I have heard of the Finder's Cult. I don't remember it offhand, but I do remember it being rough. Oh, yeah, we can't. <laughs> we can't do that one. Um, yeah, we can't do that one. This is exactly what I remembered because I saw this in the FBI vault. It's all just child abuse and stuff. We can't can't cover that. Oh, yeah. I'll have Baca, but I appreciate the support. You know, someone just said Gino's just sitting there. Hey, I, hey, I just I get to enjoy the. Show. <laughs> I sit here and enjoy it just like everybody else. <laughs> this is not a professional thing at all. But Hazel says Hazel Hazel has. For me, the most crazy UFO video to date is the recent Iran UFO where um, Iran security forces can't take it down. Surreal. I don't know that one. I've seen, Gina, have you seen that one? I haven't. Oh, you know what? I have. I actually have that one, one uh, saved. Um, yeah, they're shooting big, big guns at it, and it's doing nothing. Uh, I thought I sent that in. I guess I, I didn't if it's not not in our, our, our I'll do it for next week. Looking slack. For weird news. Uh, uh, I do not have Slack available. Oh. Let me put it in. Well, we'll get it. We'll get it next week. It'll be a good video for next week. Okay. Enrico Floor is there. The outro funky song is now a major earworm. I got to have it in my playlist. Do enlighten us about the song and include it in the merch. It's called With Music on Repeat by Victor Lundberg. I'll get it for you. It, it's a jam, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But what's funny is when you go to the song page, yeah, have you read the comments? There's a there's a link to it. Jen and I commented on it like really early a long time ago. You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This evening when I heard music. I wouldn't be too late. I was wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> when I got close, my heart was pumping to the beat that was blasting through the night. Yeah, that's a jam. So there you go. Link, uh, link should be in the chat. Is Montana of Assyria. Love you and everyone involved in the show. Keep it up. Thank you very much for the support. Need some of that That's space. mostly for Victoria. Say again, Gino. <laughs> <laughs> There's Katie499. Thank you for being a truth guy. I still have to watch your your still love to watch your early vids. Great content. Love to the Wife House team. Hecklefish for Prez of all biologics. Love it. Hecklefish for President stuff is that do we still have that stuff in the store uh, yeah yeah i think so i don't even know where the our mugs are under home goods yeah he, oh here's here's the fistable version uh, that's that's the main image that they put up that's that's the one <laughs> this is not a professional operation anywhere that's the main image you're killing it Hecklefish for president. There he goes. Support his platform. Shop to the wildfiles.com. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate you. Patrick S is there. 499. We need the Snowden type whistleblower for UAPs. That guy literally ran to another nation to disclose his intel. That's a whistleblower. Yeah. Guy threw kind of threw away his life to blow the whistle. That's the guy we need. I I believe they would murder him. I mean, they tr they tried to murder Snowden as well. Allegedly. Melissa Taylor, Allegedly. $5. I ordered my Heckle, Cut sh Heck Heckle Cult shirt. Cannot wait to get it. That is, that's a good shirt. Is that, is that a Patreon exclusive? That one? Yes. Or can anyone buy that? 
benevolent at the top. Oh. Cult is um, for the mods only. She means ah. the benevolent. Ah. That's a great design. It is. There's Terry L. Getman. Thought she was trying to get me. Uh, thank you for all the effort you guys put into your episodes. Best part of my Thursdays. It's like the third best part of mine. <laughs> Bruce Lombardo of Dick's Division. Have you ever looked into the 2009 Turkish UFO video? It looked like you can see the grays moving around behind the large porthole in the front. Yeah, Bruce, I covered, um, went into it, spent about an hour on those videos a couple of weeks ago, and I think the clips are up on the backstage channel of that, if you want to check that out. But yeah, he's right. If you haven't seen those videos, they're crazy. It looks like you can see aliens through the, uh, through the windows. And the sightings happened for years in the same spot. Probably might be my favorite UFO video after... After the guy that we played earlier, that guy, that guy's the best. Hey, Look at it's coming down the same direction. Oh, it's breaking up. Oh, it's six, it's eight, it's nine. Oh shit. Oh shit. Look at that. Oh, look, look at that. They stop. They stop. Look at that shit. Should be shooting that. All right. And there he goes. My favorite UFO video. All right, so check that out in the backstage channel. Cheapest big spenders back five dollars. Uh finally figured it all out. The this weird stuff, the TARDIS has gone crazy. RIP War Doctor, but 10th slash 14th is the best. I haven't checked out 14 yet. Well, 14 I started start. with 14 started with 10. Right. But I haven't tried any. I haven't tried any yet because I'm still kind of oh. sour yeah. from thirteen. I know it's not Jody's fault. No, no disrespect. I mean, she's I, she's great and everything else, but you can't can't f with the doc. Jordan Furlow four ninety nine. If I send you a video I took of what I think could be a UAP, will you play it live and see what people in the comments say about it? Fourteen second video. Absolutely, Jordan. Absolutely, would play it. Don't send it tonight because we are we're we're coming to the end. But we'll get it next week for you. There is Akidna. Akidna 999. You should do one on hyperthermia. I was diagnosed with with this. Is it's not technically a true diagnosis as it's still being studied, but I'm like one of 300 and something to have it. Love the show. Does he mean hyperthermia? That's the one where you get cold. cold, right? Well, that's hypothermia. That's hypothermia. So this is when he just gets hot. Hyperthermia? Never heard of so it. He gets, you get hot, Echidna? Is that what's up? Let me see if, how hot, get hot he gets. Hot. You get hot? Paul Savory, is Kesha still coming? She... She, it wasn't Kesha, but it looked like it might have been her boyfriend or something like that. But yeah, they were here. They they had dropped off their their booty, loot, stuff, bags. Gilchrist Muir, Moore, Gilchrist Muir. Hey AJ, I I'll help write that geeky newspaper for you guys. I'm a comedy writer. We'll be happy to hit me up, and I'll do you a sample article. Uh, do the sample article. Email it to um. Where should she email it? Go on Discord and then send to Discord. Go on Discord and, and open a ticket or send it to Gino. What, what are you pointing at? I'm trying to point at Gino and Victoria, but my screen is backward. And so you're struggling with trying to point? Yeah, I'm like, go. I just saw you doing this. I didn't know it was like some weird dance or you were just vibing yes were, were you vibing i'm done vibing all right she's done vibing edgar arturo hey you guys might find the story interesting google this christopher nolan's older brother was accused of being hitman who murdered a u.s financier in costa rica in 2005 using the fake name matthew oppenheimer i heard that story i love it it's good. i'm gonna put that on my on my list edgar, nolan if we brother do hit 
if we do that story, uh, uh, we should include um, uh, uh, natural born killers. Lawrence? I, uh, natural born killers. Uh, well, you know, from Cheers. What's his name? I am the Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's father is also a hitman. Yes, that is true. Seamus M is back. I used to drive a Cadillac. Then I joined this stupid show. The human doesn't pay me much. I need a lot more dough. I need another shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. I need a shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. Mylar balloons are the new swamp gas. Um, had time to watch Sean Ryan's interview with Greer and the three military whistleblowers. Ready if UFO, UIP hearings aren't just psyops? Great up and great work you do and your crew. I know it's a ton of work for one up. It certainly is, Seamus, but I'm glad that you're out there. I hope you enjoy it. I appreciate the support, especially such generous support. Thomas Ritchie, AJ, are you still not singing Chris Isaac? I can't sing Isaac anymore because they they copyright claimed me. Thomas Ritchie wow. talking about a very old video I did on my personal channel, which I don't know if it's still up. Might be. But no one needs to see that. There's Augie for five dollars. What is that anime intro you put in before the episode goes live? It's epic AF. It's YouTube gives you 10 to choose from. That's just the one that's most epic. I keep forgetting the artist's name. I have recalled it from time to time. But I forget his name. But it's it's findable. Drifter, a hundred dollars. Woo! I just want to celebrate another day of swimming. I just want to celebrate another super chat. Put my faith in you humans. And you humans let me down. Then you give me a shekel and it turns my heckle frown upside down. I just want to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Another day of swimming. <laughs> Here's Drifter for $100. Hey, you handsome SOB. My dad and I both love your videos. Well, appreciate that, Drifter, and say hi to Papa Drifter for us. I guess that would make Woody Harrelson's father, the hitman, Papa Woody. There's Arc Punk Comics for $9.99. Didn't catch this episode, but wanted to send some chickity ching to the Wild Files team. I like big tips, and I cannot lie. You other fish can't deny. Love you guys, and don't worry, Jen. I got caught in the rain in a white tee tonight and actually got flagged for two UAPs. <laughs> two giant orbs out there. That's funny. Hector Rosa, how much to eat the hecklefish? Also, what happened to Space Panda? Is he a lizard panda now? He's not a lizard panda, Hector. And I don't know if you want to eat hecklefish because remember, Animals taste like what they eat. And he lives on vodka and White Castle cheeseburgers. Adam Harrison for $10. Oh, yeah. Tip of the morning, human. I was wondering if you all would like some weird weather phenomena that I recorded from near Oak Ridge Labs when they attempted to search for alternate dimensions. Thank you all for the best show. Yeah, we definitely want that, Adam. We'll play yeah. that uh, next week during the After Files. You know, uh, I want to make a quick comment on this. In LA, I um, saw a, a, a ball lightning storm, which I'd never seen before. And it really looked like there was aliens and UFOs or something going on. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I do have some, some video of that, but I've never seen ball lightning besides that. All right, we'll check that out next week. Next After Files, that's going to be our show, everybody. Thanks so much for supporting. Hope everyone enjoyed Gino Rodica. Uh, Gino Story Hour will be back next week. Uh, this week was Gino Rodica. So that's Gino. Thank you. There he goes. Peace out. And Victoria, great work as always. We appreciate you. We're looking forward to next week. We're going to have a little 
uh, a little personal time with Victoria. That's going to be the name of the segment is personal time with Victoria. I think it was. And thank you for your help, Jennifer. And thank yeah. you for changing it to something a little bit more reasonable. <laughs> there she goes. Thanks to everyone who supported with super chats tonight. I really appreciate it. It keeps the channel going. Don't forget shop at the wifis.com. You can get stuff. If you rather get stuff for your money than just stupid responses from my face hole or the best way to support the channel is through Patreon three bucks a month or however much you want to spend, get access to the discord. You get to see the videos early, sometimes really early with no commercials, no sponsor reads, none of that stuff, uh, early access to things like the plushies and other benefits. So that's uh, the Patreon page. Anyway, thanks so much for helping out and hecklefish. We'll see you on the way. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I swam down each, each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried, I've had my fill. My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all It's all so amusing Do you think I did all that And may I say Not in a shy way Oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way, for what is a fish, what has he got, if not himself, then he has not, to say the thing. Take care of those waitresses, will you? All right, everybody get home safe. This is Hecklefish. And you know what? I did it my 